Well, hey, it's a new face. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Cody? <laughs> oh, boys, I am so, so sorry. Oh, it's not a problem. Hey, we yeah, were no problem just going to record a different episode. We, we record until wee hours of the morning, usually. So, Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> we're like, because we'll we, we only meet up like once a yeah. month. So. Oh, nice. Can you guys all hear me all right? Yeah. 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 Sounds yeah. Good. good. Perfect. I say, I'm still in the process of trying to download that thing real quick if we need to, but. Uh... You don't have to. We could just use this audio. It's Man, no I spent the entire day hyped up about this thing. And then I <laughs> for dinner. In my mindset went from this completely to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for sure. I died. I got on. I was like, oh, yeah, I never posted this post for Science Project. And I'm like, oh. as soon as I clicked over, Google Meet pops up. And I'm like, oh, my God. I flew <laughs> home to my in-laws. I'm like, yeah, go. <laughs> uh, i appreciate you guys understanding that <laughs> yeah it's no big deal life happens so what do you guys with all your nice little setups you guys I really just love well we've it. been doing this for <laughs> six years six years now yeah <laughs> i know the other day i was in the car and i got on to the episode where you guys were at birkin fest last year and oh, yeah. uh, i mm -hmm. wasn't there last year beer wise but i was there in, in person and then this year i had beers there and i'm like I listened to the whole episode thinking I was like, I heard the part at the beginning and I'm like, I want to hear if they say anything about my beer. And then I'm like, oh, wait, this is 2022. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <beer's there. laughs> yeah. We we sneakily released that episode as a bonus episode, like two episodes ago. So it's not even labeled that, that we sense. were there. So it's kind sense. of, you have to kind of be listening to every episode to even hear that. So I guess feel that. Well, you guys have become a, a, a very common thing in my car to my drive to the brewery. So. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! Uh, nice. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, nice. I honestly like. I don't know a lot about the uh, like the the nerd out stuff that you guys have talked about. I not a huge Marvel guy. I just haven't watched the movies to be honest. And that's fair. Uh, but I always listen to the beer part minimum. And then, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, if, that's if, what if I, I said. I know what's going on. I'll, I'll, I'll hang out and listen. But <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You <laughs> listen for like twenty minutes, and like you're set, right? You don't have to go for the extra hour for the nerdy nonsense you'd be like yep yeah, 20 minute beer episode i'm good we're out <laughs> well for sure and i mean i mean and i gamed back in the day i still game a little bit every once in a while but uh working two jobs is crazy and yeah. uh oh, I bet. so it's like when i when i when i see something i understand or you guys are doing like fort wayne beer or something like that i'm like oh I'll hang out for a little yeah. while longer and see you know but love the content man i'm, I'm <laughs> very lucky to have the opportunity to happen with you guys and see you all again you know most of you guys uh Oh yeah, Keith. Oh, is, you, you, you did not meet Keith. Yeah, I was gonna say, nice to meet you for yeah, the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was cool to see meet you guys all down there and uh, yeah. be able to, you know, work this out. Yeah, it was a very fun event. Um, should we let's intro the show like maybe normal, and then we'll introduce you. So it'd be actually legit. Yeah, let's let's figure that out. Uh, how how does that go again? You know uh, the thing you always say. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the usuals. The usual. <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome to the Drink In Geek Out podcast. This is a show where we drink beer and geek out. I'm your host, Dustin, and alongside me is a different host, Saf, and with me is uh, Keith, and with me is Pale, and we have a special guest on the show from Science Project Brewing, Cody Moon. Welcome, Cody. How are you doing today? Uh, we're doing all right, man. Doing all right. Yes, I was brewing today. Good, good. The he just said you're from Science Project Brewing. Oh, Maybe I thought you were yeah, that's what I was brewing today. And I was like, no, I, oh. uh, I'm, I'm at my kitchen table. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you obviously look like you're in the brewery having <laughs> good fun. Um, normally, we'd start off the episode by saying, here's the beer review. Uh, but we did this without you. That's okay. We, we'd figured we'd enjoy this one. Yeah. Um, less pressure on us if the brewer is on. With yeah. Us. <laughs> yeah. We gave it a high score, it. so uh, yeah, you have nothing to worry about. All high scores <laughs> over here. It's it's all right. It's all right, man. It's you know, uh, I'm a I'm a big untapped guy, so uh, you can catch me. Look, at, I mean, I I probably have an untapped on our beers are open right now on my phone. So uh, <laughs> I read it all. I mean, I read it all. So um, and you know, it's 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 your own opinion, and that's that's cool with me and. Um, I just appreciate people drinking the beers I make and, um, you know, it's like a chef, man. Like you're not going to like everything everyone does, but at the end of the day, um, if you can appreciate craft beer and, um, still love it, like that's, that's where we're at, man. It's, it's a community. So 
Do you ever read anything on there like, oh, that is a good suggestion. Maybe I'll try that next time. <laughs> uh, I didn't think, yeah, we well, so we've had a couple of things come on that when we're like, you know, would love to see this have a little bit more body or that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad I'm writing other people's untapped reviews. Uh, <laughs> but the thing I get the most, I think, about it is, is like uh, we were at Hops and Drops this year and someone logged it and said it tastes like a bathroom and not because they're next to a bathroom. And I... Uh, Oh, that's rude. Mm. Yeah, that was, that was a little bit rough, and mm -hmm. uh, but it, it you know guess it, it is what it is. I mean, uh, his five stars were Bud Light and Miller Light, right? Of course. Oh, well, you that know? makes sense. He doesn't want yeah. anything with flavor. It was still a wheat beer, so it's kind of. I mean, yeah. I was like, huh. I, I I just missed it on that guy, but again, you know, it's personal opinions, and uh, right. it is what it is. But it's still craft beer, and uh, hey, if they're logging it, they're logging it. So it's all yeah, we were going through for the life of the Marty, some of the untapped things and one said a barrel aged version would be great so oh, have you ever thought yeah. about barrel aging this boy or are oh, you or... it's coming man it's, oh, uh, nice. Ooh, let's go. it's coming yeah so uh you know honestly like it, like you know having the conversation with the three of you guys and keith it was it was sad to have you not there man it was a great conversation but yeah. um you know this is this is one of my babies man like uh you know i say that and i and i've only brewed it twice once on a homebrew <laughs> side and oh, once wow. here at the pro side. So mm -hmm. um, it was one of those things that I milked the home brew one so long that I didn't want to rebrew it because I was like, <laughs> I do four ounces every couple days. I don't have to worry about brewing it again. But um, the response and the overall um, enjoyment of it and and just what it, it's about um, has really inspired me. Uh, this year's at Frickin' Fest at Tom's, um, I took a blueberry version. Um, Ooh, went over great. Everyone, I mean... Tea missed it people I loved know. it um uh tom reached out and said i i took second place second overall place for second place overall so the beer of the show or whatever Yeah, the show with it and that and that's huge for me i mean there's right. a lot of big names at that event which is mm -hmm. i mean i was over the moon about it but that's uh, awesome yeah barrel versions come in uh i think we're gonna have some variants come in of some fruited versions and uh, so yeah i mean if you've ever had king cake before um you can buy about every fruit possible in it um, and so I'm, I have a really good friend, uh, one of my college roommates, uh, she's, she was actually a Katrina victim. Um, oh, wow. she lost her house to Katrina, but she moved back after college and that's who I visit when we're down there. And so I text her right after this beer came out and it was kind of blowing up and I was like, Hey, go to the store during Mardi Gras this year. Take a picture of the side of the king cake box where all the fruits are listed and they just check which one it is. <laughs> and, uh, so I got, I got some work to do boys. So we're, we're excited. Uh, I'm looking forward so, to it. So, so like next because it says it's a once a year thing. So next year there might be like three or four versions that we could. Yeah. So I think or is that the plan? Yeah. That's what kind of what it, where, we, where we're at. So um, I'm still an elementary school teacher as a day job. Um, and so uh, I brewed this the day before Thanksgiving this past year. Um, and so it's kind of, that's going to be my day. Cause it's, Oh, it's roughly a 13 to 14 hour brew day. The way we yeah. have to brew it to get it to be as big as it is. Um, and to kind of get where I want out of it. So um, it's going to be the day before Thanksgiving every year because I'm normally always scheduled off that day. Um, and then uh, the goal is we're going to double batch it this year. So mm -hmm. it's going to be, a, I mean, I'll, it, it, like it's going to be easily a 20 hour brew day probably this week, this year. But, um, you know, ultimately, like I want, I, I mean, I would love for this. I mean, you guys have probably have had Amish crack from Hop Lore. Oh, yeah, yep. that's Ooh, really yep. good. Yep. You know, really good. Stefan over there is and they're doing an amazing job. And, um, for me to take this and hopefully turn it into something like he's got going on over there. It's kind of where my goal is at. So, um, you know, uh, not to flatter him too much, but that, I, I love the Amish crack beer I buy every year. And um, every time I can have a chance to try it as, a, you know, a more unique version, um, like you guys had the uh, apple fritter that year in 2022. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. It was, it was good. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at. Like, you know, I want to be a beer to play with, but I want to be a one year only uh, when it's gone, it's gone. And, um, you know, this year we partnered it with a bananas foster smoothie sour mm -hmm. uh, that went over amazing. And, uh, so next year we might do another, a third beer or it might just be those two. So okay, that'd be fine. Um, without giving away trade secrets, why is it a 13 hour brew day? Uh, so really it's, it's not really a secret. It's just, um, our system is only a three and a half barrel batch. So, um, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's a smaller batch. So the problem with our, equipment is when you add the grain and the water together to do the mash process, um, you can't maximize that out on how much grain is in this beer. 
so how we had to do it was we did a we did a mash process for the first part. Uh, basically, did a 65 gallons, and then we had to do the whole mash again for another 65 gallons, and then we did a two hour boil. So oh, wow. um, it was you know normally it's a once a one time mash, and then we start the boil, um, and instead we had to like you know heat water up again. We had mm, to we yeah. had to move water around. We had to do, but we only do one boil, so we maximize the boil kettle. Um, to the full three and a half, yeah, half barrels, and then we boil forever. And uh, we ended up with uh, about 110 gallons of finished beer this year, and uh, we'll shoot for 220 next year. So that'd be insane, <laughs> right? Yeah. That'd be wild. So, Sounds like yeah. you've got to upgrade your facility. For every year, not 10 percent plus. It's 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 a great system. You know, it's out of Blakeman from Lafayette and. Those guys are great to us, and they're just on the street uh, about 40 minutes. So uh, it's worked out great. But any beer that's big, um, you know, we started doing our smoothie sours. We do a four-barrel batch base, and we split it into two two two-barrel batch batches. That way I can release double the amount of sour without double the amount of brew days. Um, And, uh, you know, that maximizes our match time where we can't really stir it very well. And Mm -hmm. anything bigger than 10%, we kind of have to do it that way. Um, we have a Rocky Road ice cream stout on right now that we um, did with Tarnish Hollow, Brandon Holder from Tarnish Hollow. Oh, we, we, yeah. we love him. him. Oh, my God. We yeah. met him. We can't wait to check out his new brick and mortar. Yeah, dude, he's killing it, man. Great guy. Uh, so we did three collabs, um, two smoothie sours, or two a smoothie sour, a normal sour, or a barrel-aged sour, and then this imperial stout that we're um, – we call it the Melting Crematorium because we're doing an ice cream series. So um, we're going to bottle that actually Wednesday. So – which Paul, you're in Fort Wayne, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Keith is in Fort Wayne as well. Yep. Me too. I'll, I'll get yeah. you guys uh, four bottles of it once we bottle it, so you guys can have that too. Cool. Um, so it's, it's gonna be a series. Yeah. So it's gonna be a series that Brandon and I are gonna do, and we're trying to do a couple different ice creams. And um, honestly, man, when this beer warms up, it's it's Rocky Road, man. The marshmallow stands oh, out. Oh man, that's the almond, the almond extracts there. It's it's mm. it's amazing. Oh, I can't wait. That's another, that was another uh, double mash brew day. Uh, another. 13% beer, almost 13% beer. So, um, but that's, I mean, those are the beers I like to play with. I like, I mean, I think the flavors stand out really well and um, they go over really well. And, you know, right now it's kind of starting to warm up. So it's kind of falling off, but yeah, it's not really stout season anymore. Yeah, that yeah. winter time, man, it's like, it's, I mean, I'll drink a stout whenever, but yeah, yeah say we all will. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. For the most part, yeah. But then when you get the in a, a snowy day, you know, stuck inside, snowing outside, and you're just smashing 12, 13% beers. So, Love that. <laughs> yeah, after mowing the lawn, it's not the first beer I go to, but if it's what I have, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we have a we have a joke with our neighbor that when we bought this house we're in now back in 2018, the first time I actually we bought it in the winter. So that first spring when I first mowed the first time, uh, she came over and gave me a beer because she's like, "You're sweating, like need some beer," uh, and it was a 10 percent porter, and I was like, oh my God. "Like you know, we I smashed it still, but I'm like, lady." <laughs> But it, it, it created a, a craftier connection right away. So that's I was like, cool. oh, that's great. Like, so we share beers back and forth now. And so. Does she like Science Project? Yeah. So it's a crazy story, man. She um, She's a transition to teacher role model. So, like, she supervises people that are going from careers to teaching. Oh, nice. And mm-hmm. she's, got, she's got three teachers in Logansport. So uh, we, we spoil her every couple Mondays. Uh, she stays the night over there, and we set her up with pizza and uh, beers and stuff too. So yeah, it's been, she's been super supportive. Great. That's awesome. That's cool. So. Okay. So we got to backtrack a little bit. You're the head brewer at science project. Yeah. We mentioned that. Uh, so how did you get it, uh, involved with science project and like into beer in general? Uh, yeah. So we took it back to like the home brewing days, man. Like, um, my wife and I got together in 2014. Um, and we were only together a couple of months before our first Christmas. Um, and so it's one of those things where it's like, we didn't really know, we, we knew each other, um, but not when you're going to start buying like meaningful gifts. Um, so I went all Harry Potter for her um, <laughs> and she went all beer for me. Um, so she got me a homebrew kit. I was living at down at Ball State at the time, um, tiny apartment, couldn't do it there. And her dad, um, the next year, so like almost a year later for fall break, he was like, Hey, you still have that beer kit? I was like, actually, yeah, I do. He's like, you want to do it? And I was like, Sure. Um, and so we did a one gallon batch. The next day we did our second one gallon batch. Day later, a third one gallon batch. Um, and we kind of just started falling in love. So 
we started what we called North Moon Brewing. Um, because my wife's last name is North Quest. So we took North and Moon, merged it. Um, good name, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that and that we rode that for uh, for a long time, man. We did that, and then uh. Uh, Those were just like your home brews under that title. Yeah, so it's North Moon Brewing is my mm-hmm. homebrew uh, home brew name, and uh, so then uh, in end of 2020, um, Tim Eaton, who's the owner of Science Project, uh, his sons go to school in Pennsylvania, and he was coming through town and went to Fortlandia here in town, and mm-hmm. my friend Logan was bartending that night, um, and he was telling him, you know, I kind of have this dream to open a brewery. You know, I moved from Chicago to Logansport, and there's not much there for me. Um, and he was trying to figure out a way for him to be able to do this. And, uh, Logan texts me that night and was like, Hey man, there's a guy here. He's doing this and that. Like you care if I give me your information. Uh, it happened to be my 30th birthday. So, uh, <laughs> if you guys can tell, I do not remember this conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, and so it, about four months later, uh, I get a, te- I get a message on the mash Fort Wayne homebrew club page who I was the president of at the time. And he was said uh, he was trying to join the group, and I said, "Okay, man, like I'm gonna add you so that you we're friends, and then I can add you to the group on Facebook." Um, and before I could add him to the group, he was like, "Hey, I'm looking actually looking for you." <laughs> oh. And you jump on a Zoom call, and I was like, "Oh, sure." I mean, this is oddly weird, but okay. <laughs> You're right. And so we get on the call one night and sit in my office, and we're talking, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, I got your information from so and so," and I was like, "This is really weird." So I got I text my friend, and he and he didn't even remember himself um and so i looked at our facebook messages and that's where he sent it and i was like oh well he did so uh long story short on that we started talking and uh we started doing different things and originally i I really didn't want to do anything about this you know i loved my homebrewing side and i loved i'd just been starting teaching about four years ago so i loved that Mm -hmm. too and um i was going to do like a consultant thing for him help him build the brew room help him teach a a brewer uh, and then move on and Ultimately, one thing led to another. You know, we kind of figured out a good schedule for me, and uh, we just agreed for me to stay on full time. And uh, we start took off running and bought a building right away in 2021 in March, and uh, opened up in 2022 in August. So that's how it all came apart. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. Why? Uh, why science project? So uh, I teach actually elementary school science, um, and that that's nice. kind of where we that's kind of where we went to on that at first, um, and then it kind of just came about one day. You know, we were kind of we were tossing around a couple names, and it was kind of one of those things where it was like we were going off things that we felt, and uh, we just didn't really agree about it a lot. So we ultimately ended a Zoom call one night, and I said, "Hey, here's what we're gonna do. I want you to go home tonight, get off here, and let's really think about like what craft beer means to each other." And we're like, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and we kind of both rolled in with, you know, experimenting and all these stuff that's things. sciencey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all this stuff, um, just different things that, like, you know, it's always evolving and it's changing and it's, uh, you know, booming and all these things. And we're like, you know, we kind of fell back to the idea. Like, it's, you know, every beer I make is a science project, man. It could be, that's uh, true. you know, your typical, you know, we brewed um, a, our, our, our pre mail on Friday. Um, and it can be a basic beer, clean, crisp, ready to go. Um, it can be this Imperial stout that has cinnamon, vanilla, graham crackers, cake, <laughs> you know? or it could be our smoothie sours where I basically throw everything under the sun at it and uh, hope it comes out the way I want it to come out. Um, but every one of them is a project, even if it's a rebrew yeah. or the first time brew. So, um, we kind of settled on science projects, kind of science themed. And then um, the logo kind of came about where we were like, well, what's science, you know, what's science project? And it's always uh, the volcano. Always. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, uh, we did that and then we kind of both fell where we felt like we each were one aspect of the logo. So, you know, I, I'm more the volcano kind of more grounded, um, always looking to explode, like ready to bring the <laughs> thing. Um, and then he's kind of the rocket where he's kind of, he's got ideas all over the place and. Uh, he's always moving real quick about moving from thing to thing to thing. And, um, you know, and it's kind of just fell that way and it, it just fit. So um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the art for our Hop Rocket IPA that we re- released. Mm-hmm. Ago. Um, that was our first original logo was the Hop Rocket and the smaller thing. Um, and we just decided to tone it down to what we are now. So, but yeah, it was a good time. I mean, it was, it kind of fits pretty well. And 
you know, we're working on, you know, we have some science theme names. We have some science theme pizzas. We have, uh, we're getting ready to roll out hopefully mid mid year this year, uh, mid year this year. I said that weird. Um, <laughs> uh, a periodic table coaster club. Oh, that's play. awesome. It's like, a, yeah, like we buy the coaster for your periodic table and, you know, you're going to get beer discounts and pizza discounts and whatever uh-huh. else we work out. Um, nice. Yearly membership. Uh, so it's kind of like we have some things that we lean real sciency and we have some things that we kind of, you know, lean on uh, just you know, Logan's port names. All my light beers have Logan's port names right now. Um, cause that's what the people there drink a lot of. So I would imagine um, a small town like that. Yeah. And so, uh, that's kind of how we've done things. Uh, you know, not, not everything science related, but well, there's, there's de- definitely a science, um, aspect about the brewery, uh, the brewery, the beers, the pizzas and, and what we're doing. So, yeah. I can suggest some science fiction beer names. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, we were... well, I actually love that idea. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'll keep me in mind. Um, we were discussing like a, a personal science project earlier, uh, kind of joking about it when it comes to glassware and if that has any effect on the beer <laughs> flavor when you're drinking out of different shaped glasses, because they, or if you had any insight on that. Because or... we, we were drinking the uh, the life of the Marty and three of us had gotten like the same experience with it, but Keith was getting something different because he was in like a goblet. I was like, yeah, I had the goblet. (laughs) I I don't know if that made a difference. I mean, I I would imagine that it has to do something, right? You know, every beer has a a preferred glass Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you, and you talk to certain people there and they, and they're, that's a, that's a law to them. (laughs) Um, You have to have it in the glass. Yeah. You got to have it in the tulip or the pint or, you know, the snifter or whatever you're using. But, um, I don't know. I, I we, we serve it at 10 ounce pours um, in a more opened glass, I guess. We don't really serve it in pints. Um, and so, we love your little beaker things for the flights. Oh, dude. <laughs> it, those it, are it, awesome. I wish we could have 16 ounce 16 ounce ones of those. It'd be sick. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> have like it's, a full metric flask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, those would be expensive and probably very fragile. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we talked about Ermeyer flasks for a while, but we realized that oh, yeah. bubble that you get when you're drinking out of that probably wouldn't be great. Yeah. No. Yeah. Make a, make a mess. Like it a DOS boot like a, situation. A DOS boot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta rotate it. <laughs> Come on. Gotta rotate it. <laughs> you can't rotate it. bubbles on all sides, though. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I've never I've never had that. Like, I, not, now, Monday, I'm going to go drink out of a pint glass and have it that way instead. Yeah, do it side by side. We were talking about doing side by sides in different classes. And saying, in any mm-hmm. excuse to drink this beer is, 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 is <laughs> right. on this. So, uh, just right from the line. I don't drink it any other way. I just, yeah, bottoms <laughs> up, man. Yeah. It's, just uh, we're, I mean, we're on our last full, be- full keg of it. And I like, every time I turn around, I'm like, I know it's so warm outside. I probably should take this off, but <laughs> take this off. I'm not gonna get to drink it as often, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. that's, you know, quality control, man. That's that's all I'm about. So right. <laughs> it may only be life of the Marty that's getting quality controlled week by week by week. But uh, we're there. Right. At least one beer is. Uh, yeah, oh, always. So <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, man. Now, now I'm now I'm like, I mean, I have a bottle here that I was like, I I figured you guys had already drank it, so I'm like, I should get one out just in case yeah. not. But then I pulled out a snifter glass, so I now I feel like I need to pour it in like a couple of different glasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's right now, boys. We're gonna do it right now. Right, right now. <laughs> Mine's empty. I can't do anything about it. I do have some left, but right now we're drinking your collaboration with two toms. The, oh, love uh, that. Yeah. Yep. So how did that collaboration come about and any insight on this beer? Oh man. Uh well, first and foremost, like I'm super thankful for Tom to even let me be, be part of that. Um yeah, we so, love Tom. We talked to him many times. Dude, Tom's a great guy, mm-hmm. and, I, and I love everything he's doing, and, and and I have you know the whole time. So, um, Tom has been a huge inspiration to the Fort Wayne Homebrew Club, um, being the fact that he was one of us before he did this, um, and he's kind of he's kind of got that still homebrew mentality, man. He's not scared to take a risk. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's willing to put his you know names out there and diff- do different things and be the first one to do it or be the you know be the first one to do it right whatever he does. right um and so when i originally was thinking about doing this and, and and tom used to be one of my taste testers man i would go in there and um those of you that have been in the tap room during the week uh jordan southwick who uh you will see him at the bar nearly every wednesday mm-hmm. Thursday, uh, yep. that dude's got a palette that 
you couldn't pay for anywhere else. So <laughs> those two, I would find any reason possible to take bottles of beer in them and have them try it when I was still a home brewer. And so when this started happening, we, you know, we kind of sat, I sat down with Tom and we kind of talked about a couple things. Like how do I, you know, enhance my recipes from five gallons to 110? Uh, how do I do this and that? And uh, he was super, super role model for me. And right out the gate, I don't think I've even brewed a beer yet. And he was like, oh, dude, we should do a collab. And I'm like, <laughs> That's great. Don't ask twice, man. Like don't ask. Twice. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Tom and I are huge burial uh, brewing from Asheville fans, uh, huge barrel fans. And um, so uh, we kind of were like, hey, let's do an Imperial Stout and kind of get, you know, it's inspired by burial and um, let's see what we can do. So uh, Tom had some interesting things right out the gate and he suggested a, like, a, like a fudge brownie and uh, fudge walnut brownie. And we were like, oh, dude, let's do it. So, um, you know, we kind of ran with that. And so uh, the two that was inspire us is just a beer that we kind of talked about how, you know, every time I go to burial, um, we fall in love with their stouts. I mean, I'm sitting looking at, Six of their stouts that oh, wow. just got delivered from my house uh, from a friend of mine yesterday because uh, I can't stop buying their stouts. <laughs> uh, and it was kind of like, you know, one of those things where, like, you know, we both kind of have aspirations of what they've done and what they've built in Nashville. And um, and so we kind of looked at that and started rolling. And so uh, most of the recipe and, and the adjuncts, you know, you got to give the time on that. You know, we kind of had ideas together. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, if, if Tom says it should go in a stout, I'm not going to argue that with him. So, right. uh, you know, he does some really good ones and it's, it's one of those things, man. It's, it was, one of those, it's honestly, it was, a, it was a huge thing for me to be able to be with him in general. So, yeah. It's like a, more of a learning experience for yeah, you because you're kind like, of you know, just getting into yeah, that like, side. Easiest way to describe it. Like karate kid, man. Like <laughs> he's like, you're Mr. Miyagi. Yes. So, and, uh, he let me, I worked with his assistant brewer who now has moved on um, and is getting ready to, open, well, he still works there every once in a while, but he's getting ready to open a rough draft tap room on Wells here in town, mm -hmm. um, mm. Kyle Snodgrass. And so I worked there with him as a learning like stage this summer before um, we really started opening. So that summer of 21, I was there um, nearly three days a week, just kind of, you know, hey, I'm going to come for a canning day or a kegging day or a, a milling day. And I just kind of just getting my feet wet on Tom's equipment before I even had my own, which was cool to have too. So, um, and then we were able to, I had the pleasure of hosting Tom and his brewers at my place a week later after that beer was brewed. And we brewed, um, what we call double duplicated hypothesis, uh, which was in a, uh, double IPA that we use some honey and stuff in. Um, and we used the, their, the favorite hops of the brewers, um, and kind of did that at our place too. So that was, that was cool to have him in my room and, um, him trust me with recipe writing to brew a beer too with them. So yeah, that's really cool. That's mm -hmm. awesome, man. Yeah, we've all canned over there. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. He invited us in. That's mm -hmm. sick, dude. That's that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it, he's a great guy, man, and he's he, he's willing to he's willing to teach. He's willing to share you know information with you, and um, even if you have no idea what's going on in the beer, he's willing to share it with you, even if you just ask. So. Um, you know, seeing him open the Fisher's tap room and doing all that kind of stuff is just, it's an awesome thing for us in Fort Wayne to have. And, um, very, That's very great for Dustin and I, cause yeah. we're much closer to the Fisher's I'm one. Cause yeah. we're, we're down in Indy. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I, and I love that to those inspire us beer, man. Like I think I have two cans left and I'm like, I don't want to open them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do great. it. great. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Oh there. yeah. That's mm -hmm. amazing. It's, it's tasty, man. That honey that's in there is oh, yeah. really kind. Yeah. Like, so it, smooth. It looked so weird when we opened it up, and I was like, "That's the <laughs> darkest thing I've ever seen in my life." Like, it tastes of everything that you would never imagine. It was wild, so but it was cool. Nice. All right. So you said earlier that like the whole like us geeking out about things isn't quite your your jam. <laughs> what do you geek out about? If Dude, you were to pick something, what would it be? You've probably been stressing over this the past couple of days when I said <laughs> so I got that text. I like it simply was like it was funny was though, um, Friday, and this is just kind of a backstory. Friday, um, I went into the middle school so our school's all connected where I teach mm -hmm. at. And so I went into the middle school where my sixth graders, my fifth graders from last year, now sixth graders, were eating lunch. Um, because I supported one of the kids' baseball teams by buying raffle tickets, and I wanted to give them a hard time about not pulling my ticket as the winner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, of course. Down, 
and I'm not even sitting down for more than five minutes. And some one of the other kids walks up and is like, "Hey, Mr. Moon, like, who would win in a fight, Harry Potter or Luke Skywalker?" And you know, I'm I'm a Potter guy to be honest. <laughs> uh, but it really made me think. I'm like, well, it depends on who gets this shot off first, man. Like, yeah. if he doesn't block the spells, he's toast. And then <laughs> I got really do into do it. lightsabers <laughs> deflect magic? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, it's, it's weird, man. I like, to be honest, I think, uh, fear is the biggest thing I, you know, nerd out about. And, um, in yeah. my Instagram page from before I did this, like I was catching wild yeast. I was doing all this weird stuff with beer and, um, just to say I did it. Um, but if I moved on from there, you know, we, I, I play, I game a lot, a little bit still, uh, you know, in the hours of, I'm not sleeping. Um, <laughs> There's very um, few of us. Yeah, All of us do that too. <laughs> yeah, I still game a little bit. Um, you know, I'm real, I'm real big into Harry Potter. You know, I uh, proposed at Harry Potter World to my wife. And oh, wow. uh, so I, I would say if I had to pick something that like, you know, I, I, I nerd out about, I think, or geek out about, I think it'd be Harry Potter and beer um, and sports. I'm, I'm a big sports guy. So um, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I, I've watched the older Marvel movies, but when they expanded into what they are now, like I've never sat down and com- I say it every year. I'm going to commit to it this summer. I'm going to watch them all. <laughs> you, just, it's impossible now. It's, yeah, there's too many now. Yeah, I just haven't. Like, I, I'm going to have to watch like 60 movies here. Exactly. And and then there's like the Disney Plus series. There's like 40 hours of more content. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I've seen all the Lord of the Rings. I've seen all the Star Wars. I've seen all Harry Potter. And that's kind of where the three that I'm like, yeah. you know, that's where I sit. It's really uh, all you need. Yeah, yeah and, we can talk about those all day. You know, it's one of those things. Uh, I, I think my my nerdiest thing is I, I play the shit out of Minecraft on mm. the, the, the the PS or PS4, Xbox 360, whatever. Um, purely because it's like Legos to me, and I yeah. think uh, yeah. that was my childhood. And I just would sit in my room, and you know, none of my Lego sets were ever together. They're just a big bulk <laughs> of Legos, and you know, just build random. Do yeah, yeah, whatever pops into your head, you'll just try it. Yeah, and I just do that on Minecraft now. So you know, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> I look up stuff on Instagram. And I'm like, I'm gonna build this. And then, you know, that project takes uh, six years. I'm like, oh, I finally finished that. That's cool. <laughs> this world isn't even updated anymore. I gotta quit this world and start over because, you know. So that's probably the thing that I'm mo- the most like, you know, nerdy about, geeky about. Um, have you ever yeah. played any of those Lego Harry Potter games? Oh, Combine the two. For sure. For sure. <laughs> I would those are very fun. Uh, achievemented those on the 360. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm currently working on uh, number two right now, again, on a new profile. Oh, wow. Uh, that's yeah. kind of how, it's kind of how I do. I, I those just, games are like, intense if you try to collect all the little golden bricks and whatnot. Uh, There's all those little things. And it's, <laughs> You know, you gotta you gotta kill Harry with Voldemort, and it's weird things happening. <laughs> it, is, it is, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, Hadabra, uh, Kedabra, we, you know. We uh, you know, when homebrewing, when I was doing that, like that was the only hobby I was really doing for a long time. You know, I still golf mm-hmm. every once in a while, um, when I can get my my golf clubs out and dust them off. But I used to fish, and I used to really be into gaming, and I just kind of every all just, my funds. It, it takes time. Funded. So. Yeah. Um, and now you, I mean, I could, I could talk about beer 100% of the time, every day, <laughs> anything. And, and it's always like, I told my wife, I, I feel terrible because, um, I'm not the most organized person, um, for my lifestyle, but, um, like, I feel like I'm like, I'm literally sitting at the kitchen table and it's like, uh, to my right here, I have a uh, beer magazine, <laughs> malt book, yes. uh, my life with a Marty bottle, <laughs> Don't mind the groceries, but all the bottles I got delivered from. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. <laughs> on the counter, some new glassware that some guy donated to me. Uh, mason jars full of uh, tinctures I'm trying to play with at home for little small batches. Uh, so that's really, I mean, uh, yeah. beer is, it's it's wild. I, and I, and what's the worst part is I buy more beer than I probably drink, like. <laughs> oh my my fridge yeah. is full of beer i had to get a new fridge because yeah. my wife was like get this I, get this <laughs> yeah. beer out of my fridge <laughs> so uh that food uh travel you know we travel a lot uh, my wife and i work kind of different shifts and so we get out we get out of the country or getting out of the city of fort wayne as much as we can together so um, yeah that's kind of where i'm at on the but like what, what's weird is though like I, with listening to your this podcast like cause i have an hour and 15 minute drive from work or home to the brewery 
Um, so it's like two episodes of yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He I, started, the whole I started listening once after we met. So I'm like, I want to get to know these guys. Like you guys were super chill at the place, and um, you know, anyone that appreciates beer, I appreciate. So it's yeah, like we can talk about beer all day. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I started listening. And so there's some things that like I've listened to, and I'd have to look at the episodes that I've watched through that I was like, oh, I had I had no I had no idea about that. And I'm, I'm texting like people like, hey. Did you know this? Did you know that? And it's like, you know, they're like, dude, you are years behind. <laughs> yeah, if we know about it. Yeah, oh. and it's like one of those things, like the excuse that I've drank since then doesn't really work that well. We haven't seen any of the Marvel movies since like Iron Man 2. Or, you know, like I listened to, what was it two days ago, three days ago? I listened to the, uh, the what was it? It's a WWF video game. Uh, oh, that was Dustin. Oh yeah, the the Duke with the Duke. Yeah, the <laughs> yes, the W what was it WCW or the WWF uh, championship my, tag team? My phone or... literally died listening to you guys' stuff today. Like it's literally on. <laughs> 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 I was listening to a different one when my wife was shopping today. Oh, um, man. What was it? yeah? It was like WWF like video game or something. Uh, but then that took me like way back like. I, dude, I remember the like the hell out. Like when yeah. I used to watch it all the time. Uh, I think I probably could still find an action figure or two around here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Roman and uh, right, but like n- what's happening now in in wrestling, and I have I have no idea no about. But it's like it's wild to like think about. And like I, before, who bought it? Was it like Paramount bought? the like wwe network or whatever i think it's on peacock so i'm guessing it's like nbc universal Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, and it was like but like my wife's uh cousin who was one of the younger cousins was in love with it and i was like i'm gonna buy this just because i want to watch like 1999 (laughs) 2000 like braille rumbles and stuff let's go watch the hardy boys man let's (laughs) yeah the the attitude era like for sure man like i remember vividly uh, it was it was 1999. It was WrestleMania 15, um, where like Undertaker like hung Big Boss Man from the Hell in the Cell and lifted it up. Oh oh yeah, I remember that. Mm. And I'm like sitting there. I'm like nine years old. I'm like I just watched someone die. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Like you know, like mm-hmm. the buried alive matches. Like, oh all my gosh, crap. yeah. You know. <laughs> Rock through Stone Cold off a bridge and like oh it was just that Hulk was Hogan life, body man. slamming uh Andre the Giant. Oh beautiful. Mm. Like, <laughs> I was watching dude. a documentary and it had um The Undertaker talking about the hell in the cell and he was like, Yeah, I had a match with uh Mankind and he said his name, I don't remember his name. He's like, I thought I killed him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that match. He like fucking threw him off the top. Yeah, <laughs> and then another. He just climbed up, and so he choke slammed him through the, the chain link fence. He's like, I oh, thought man. I killed him. <laughs> it's just wild, dude. It's like, you know, it was funny. It was like, you know, our parents had to be like, it's fake, guys. It's fake. But we were the first ones to be choke slamming each other on the bed in the bedroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Isn't it fake? Like we're doing it. You know, like it's mm-hmm. happening. Uh, He's bleeding right now. That's not fake. <laughs> Like, Are you stupid, mom? <laughs> what happened to your brother? It was a steel chair. It's okay. <laughs> he bounced back. You know, like, uh, yeah. I mean, it was. It's. It's wild to just, just like see things that I was like. I mean, as a kid, man, I was all about that, like wrestling and uh, just anything that was cool at the time, and just to see the things that I'm missing out on now that I'm like, oh, you know, this is kind of weird. You know, now they got YouTubers wrestling. I know, like. Like one of the Paul boys, yeah, or, Logan Paul yeah. or Jake, Jake, one of them, what, yeah, one Jake, of them. Jake Paul, I think, yeah, Jake Paul, or oh, like Pat McAfee's in there, like messing around too. Yes, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I'm like, it's okay, like, this yeah. is where I'm, I'm glad I'm not. I am over Pat McAfee, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he, he picked a fight with Packer fans over the whole Aaron Rodgers is my homeboy. Get the Fuck out of here, Pat. <laughs> Stay in Indianapolis. Let Green Bay handle their trade situation. Uh, Jesus. Man, I felt the I felt the Aaron Rodgers thing was just like the Brett Favre thing back when we were kids, man. Like, Thank like, you. This is mm-hmm. the exact Thank you. same aspect, man. Like 
I can't wait for Aaron Rodgers to play for the Vikings in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if there is a money line for him to play for the Vikings right now, I'd probably put I'd, five bucks on it. I, I would at least put five bucks. Yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. I, I would I would put that out there just to say it did it. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I think I think there's like little things that I'm kind of nerdy about, and like get I will get into, and uh, and then there's other things that I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's it is what it is, and. You know, I, I grew up and never watched Star Wars until I met my wife, and uh, you know that was that was a sin. You know, that was, <laughs> <laughs> and so we we sat down and watched them all, and then I'm like, oh, you know, we, every discussion we get into, I'm like, oh, I, I like the, I like the new ones, and they're like, <laughs> she's like, because no, you're right. dumb. <laughs> 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 you know, they're like, what do you mean you don't like the old ones? I'm like. Eh, I, I don't know. The original trilogy is kind of boring. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can go back to our previous episodes. You can hear our ranking of the movies. And The Last Jedi is up there for me, yeah. at least. So, yeah, I mean, I like Ryan Johnson does a really good job. I, I, Dude, it was cool. Yeah. I mean, he like, like, set you know, up a it, person of color or two people of color as main characters mm-hmm. for J.J. Abrams just to fuck them off. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Dude. And I've seen like the the Disney Plus series. I like because because we my 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 wife and her siblings are real into it, so we watch those all. And, like and, and those have been and good stuff. too. It's just I don't know the background, and I and I mm-hmm. and I never spent the time to get to know it. You know, mm-hmm. my wife's the person that every summer, every, once a year, she watches all the Star Wars, watches all the Lord of the Rings, and watches all the extended versions of Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh geez. Uh, there's no other version. <laughs> yeah, there was a time I left for work and came all. I worked an entire shift that I was. And she's still on the first one, <laughs> and they're all still in the same exact spot I left them. It's the same yeah. movie, like yeah. It's it's that's what it's doing. I, just work, I just made two hundred bucks today. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't moved an inch. Yeah, so I, I agree. Every year I'll watch Lord of the Rings, the non extended versions. I love the movies, but yeah. it's just like I. But they're I, long. They're long. They're crazy. Mm-hmm. I, so, I'd much rather watch the movies and read the books. Like I've, I've listened <laughs> to true. the audiobooks for those after I read them all. I was like, this is too long. They're, <laughs> they're still walking. <laughs> yeah, they're still walking. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 how I feel. Uh, but just hop on those birds and let them take you the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah, it's those giant birds that you can ride around. Well, and that's the thing. Like, like I even being a teacher, I, I'm not a reader, man. Like. I struggled with I struggled in elementary and middle school with it, and I just got burnt out. And and I, I I've never even finished the whole Harry Potter series. Like I'm, I have book number seven to read, but I'm just like, if I finish it, I'm I'm done. Like <laughs> right. yeah, I'm always reading it because I've never finished it. You know, <laughs> uh, and my wife is completely opposite. She's like reading these like old, tiny little Game of Thrones books, and wow. I'm like, yeah, let's just uh let's just watch the let's watch the show. It's yeah. Love the show, but it's like much easier. They put it up yeah. there. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, the books hey, are always better. better. I'll skip season four and we. I'll, I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm done and you're two pages in. Let me know. Like, <laughs> it's how it works. So, uh, and that is, it is what it is. Like, I, I give the kids all a hard time. I was like, yeah, you guys got to read your books. And I'm like, you don't. Like, I, no. I didn't. I don't do that. Why am I telling people to do that? No. <laughs> uh, and every year, every January, I'm like, I'm going to read 10 books this year. Never. No. But I Maybe mean, ten pages. I read a lot of pages. pages. And like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, a malt book. Yes, like a whole world of malting. Like, who's gonna really care about a whole world of malting or why stuff gets wet the way it gets wet? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess my dumb self. I don't. I don't know. Uh. So. But it sounds like we need to have your wife on to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, a more like, like, geeky I, I person. That, like, yeah. I'm like. She's like, well, these are the guys we met at uh, an indie event, right? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, so what's what's the geek out part of the episode? And I'm like, well, they told me I need to come up with it. <laughs> the, she's, like, she's like, oh no, that's a lot of pressure. Like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, you're not really that kind of person. And I'm like, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. So I mean, like, we'll just bounce around. I mean, we're, <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, we can talk about anything, you know, like. Yeah, exactly. We're yeah. not. Is everything I talk about is kind of geeky, so it's like okay. So, uh, you know, I, I did go see the new. Have you guys seen the new uh, Super Mario Bros. movie? Yep, I did. I did. Not yeah, really good. Yeah, I better take my ears. <laughs> Spoilers I won't, I won't there. Ruin it, but I, I, I have to edit one. this shit too. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hear it. <laughs> no, I, we saw. We, we went on a cruise for spring break, and we had some time to waste, so we went and saw it. 
I I didn't know. Anything. I mean, I just knew it was out, and all my kids were yeah. watching it at school. And I was thoroughly impressed. It's great. It's fun. And, it's it's and, a kids movie, but it's I was still making fun. a few more movies I've seen, like Kirby's coming out and Super Smash Bros. And yeah, they're kind of like this was a huge hit, so those movies are going to come eventually. I oh, think. right. Yeah, <laughs> talking about that, it's like yeah, almost so a that's, billion dollars. That's cool, you know. I mean, yeah. so. I was thinking those pictures behind you kind of remind me of Mario. I can't really tell what they are, but just... oh, right here, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who are these? This is actually it's actually New Orleans. Uh, okay, just like oh, the nice. colors look like like the Mario sky and stuff. Yeah, I get, I can mm. feel that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just yeah, like we... how the blurry vision I'm getting of them. <laughs> it is. Kind of, I was like, I was looking in the. I was like, what is that? I looked at <laughs> you had to turn around to see the good one. Yeah, like I said, we vacation a lot. We've gone to a lot of the bigger cities, and so when we go, we try to buy like local art and, and our house is in it. So I think New oh, York city is above the, the guest bathroom and uh, we got our dog pictures everywhere. A lot of new Orleans. We're big new Orleans fans, as you can tell with the life of the Marty. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Good. Um, so, and yeah, and the rough draft people, Kaylee Snodgrass, who's opening that she's the one that did the label. So life oh. of the Marty's got tap there when they open, which is cool. So, um, and then she'll be doing a lot more labels for us in the future. So. Dustin had comments for her. I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to hear that when the episode airs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good comments or bad comments? They're comments. It's just one criticism. All good. They're comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, we like it, but it was just it was just funny. I, th- I, I, I just thought, it. yeah, there, it's in the episode, but I just thought that I don't know. There's too much purple. Okay, I can see like that. Like a black background would make it pop a little bit more. Or yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Well, so my complaint is that the label's too small. Yeah, yeah, so, and that we I mentioned mean, that too because yeah, it needs to be like, bigger on the bottle. I was like, yeah, it's ten percent so, of the bottle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was happening there, like, and that's not her. That was that like she sized it to be where I wanted it to be, and the guy that printed it, like, yeah, he took forever to get it printed, and then all of a sudden it gets there, and I'm like, what? When am I gonna put these on? <laughs> like, I can't even read this. Like, like you know, this little writing. I'm like, my eyes are okay, and I can't read it, but. Uh, you know, I think we're going to change the color of the wax by year so that... That's, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, you know. That's good. Yeah. If people are going to collect bottles or stuff, you know. And, it, and and I have an empty bottle that's labeled and wax on my shelf in my office. And just to remind me of things I'm, I'm, I'm always chasing. And uh, But, uh, yeah, so we're big Mardi Gras people. Big, uh, we, we actually went in 2020 right before COVID hit. Um, and that kind of was, like, the, the inspiration. You know, like, I had, I had a bunch of king cakes I brought home. And we were supposed to have a Mardi Gras party. Um and no one, we weren't able to do it because we held off and waited. And so I had a bunch of king cakes to eat. And I was like, I'm going to brew a beer with this. And so, uh, you know, I found a recipe online that I kind of liked and started tweaking and um, created to my, be my own. And the first version I brewed of this, it actually ended up at 14 and a half percent as a homebrew one. Wow. Um, and so it was, it was heavy. It was yeah. heavy. So. And this is crazy. This is 12 percent. It does not like you yeah. cannot feel that alcohol at all i mean you can feel it but you can't mm-hmm. taste it yeah and it's nice because like the the uh rocky road ice cream is up there too and it's the same way and i think it's so one sweet. of the things that like um during covid you know school closed and uh my wife was a nurse so it went from me not seeing my wife hardly at all to not at all because yeah. i was yeah. there um and so i started brewing and i, I every every time kind of how it went for me as brewing wise as a home brewer i would um hit a break, not brew for four or five months. Um, and then when I came back, I'd pick a new ingredient or a new thing to just geek out about and lose my mind. <laughs> so during COVID it was, it was yeast. And I, I w- was obsessed with yeast. I was collecting it from leaves and just doing weird wow. stuff. And, um, and so one thing I learned about it was, you know, the syrupy stouts that we get that are still amazing, but you know, you can't drink a lot of them. Um, because how syrupy they are or um, kind of how boozy they are. It's just a yeast thing. So, uh, you know, the yeast part of my big Imperial Stouts is probably, you know, even with the amount of grain that's in this beer, it's probably 65% of the cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I'm like, I want to make sure that when I put this yeast in there, it's, it's the most yeast possible. It's going to be the healthiest yeast possible. And we're not having this issue of, Hey, your beer that started out huge is, 10% 10% and crazy sweet, um, which could work out in the beer's favor. And, and some people are able to pull that off, but uh, it's just not, it's not what I want to drink. And yeah. so it's not produce. So, um, but yeah, the weird things like the picture, like the yeast is just weird, man. Overall, like 
Um, you know, I've been, I, I want to do a, a cold shit beer so bad because I'm like, what can I catch in Indiana air? And uh, <laughs> you know, so tenderloin juice and something else, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Corn and tenderloins is what you're going to get in that beer. And so somebody did that uh, April Fool's joke that was like, Coney Island breath or something like that. Or uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of line, dude. Yeah, yeah. line. Yeah. That was hilarious. I thought it was real. Like, yeah, I, would drink that. Try that. I would drink it. I yeah. love Coney dog. So dude, I'm like, I'd try Coney it. Coney Island itself, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a staple. Well, uh, and, and I know Phil over there at line. He's a great guy. And, yep. and I, I, I was on the, my cruise uh, when I, when I saw it. And to be honest, I was like, this is dope. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm excited about this collaboration. Uh-huh. Like, and then I realized it. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's April April <laughs> like, it took someone else's post about something else to me to see that. So, yeah. You know, we had to um, tell Paul that it was a joke. He, he believed yeah. it for like three days. <laughs> I, I believe every April Fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> he got fooled oh, many times that day. Hopefully, uh, you'll be seeing a science project dot in line collaboration coming out here soon, too. Oh, so. good. Oh, oh yes. yes. We love dot in line. Oh. Yes. So we, we, uh, you know, and that's the thing about me being from Fort Wayne, man. I, I idolize these Fort Wayne brewers, man. I think I think Fort Wayne is really becoming a good craft beer town, and mm-hmm. uh, it's it's giving people from Indy the reason to come up here. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, just like you know, Indy. Like I can't go to Indy and not go to Googman and yeah. oh, for sure, spend mm-hmm. half my salary at Googman. And, <laughs> I want to try every beer <laughs> yes. every time. Every Luckily, time. it's like ten minutes from my house, so it... <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably three flights deep every time I'm there. Like yeah. ever, and it's obnoxious, but um, <laughs> you know, it's giving some people a reason to come to Fort Wayne and. And so for me, having these outlets like Tom, let me brew with him, and the Rough Draft Tap Room, they're gonna host three of my beers at all times. Oh, wow. So we have three taps there at all times there, which is cool. Nice. So, um, you know, anything that you, you see us release and you want there, like they're gonna do it for you. So which is cool. And uh, then Dot Line reached out. We we talked to him the other day, and he was like, I really want to do one with you, and, and I'm not gonna tell you no. Like it's it's a cool opportunity <laughs> for me. Yeah. Uh, so wow. Portlandia is my next one on my list to to do a collab with here in town. So. Oh, that, you probably great. know all those guys from the MASH club, yep. so <laughs> that should be a pretty easy one to throw together. Question. Yes. Have you ever been to Bird Boy? Uh, so, I, we, so, yeah. So I've – how to explain this. So yeah. during 2020, I took over as president of the Homebrew Club. Mm. My goal was to get a membership. We, we, we started a, a paid membership because of insurance issues. And my goal was to get discounts for that. Um, and so I went out when they were in Roanoke and sat down um, with Ben. Mm-hmm. Um, and then shortly after that, they closed that down out there. And then the thing that's going around in Fort Wayne right now, I'm not sure what's really happening. Um, I have not heard from them since then. So I've, I had a, a little bit of their beer, but I wasn't aware of what was going on i had it at uh, um wings and ribs down here southwest side of town mm-hmm. um and then i went to go search for it and it was in a warehouse and i was like that's not real uh so I <laughs> it, it was real it was, it was real. real yeah it was at one point yeah we've been we there a lot of drinking yeah. out there yeah we brewed with them mm-hmm. at that little at warehouse. That warehouse yeah, yeah we created yeah. the red turn of the jet ipa <laughs> oh love that yeah, yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. love that yeah his little place off of cold water uh, across from that car dealership, what was that? Uh, oh, Collins. Or? Collins. It was Collins. Like, it was a. It was behind Putt Putt. It was a Hyundai dealership. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the Hyundai place, yeah, mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, they had a nice yeah. spot there. So I, I, I believe uh, Ben's not part of it anymore, um, and uh, I'm not sure what the guy's doing. With hey, I, if you message him, he says he's getting ready to open the brewery back up. Like yeah, they downtown. say they're gonna. Take over that where that old school brew house was about to mm-hmm. open, and that well, never opened. Yeah. It's like uh, that place yeah, that seems did. cursed. Like everything yeah. that tries to go in there fails. Yes, I'm not. I'm not disappears. sure about what's going on there. Um, yeah. The Fort Wayne Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> it's something. It's weird. Something. So, um, you know, I guess more more beers coming to t- or more brewing is coming to town. Yeah, I've heard that. So that's out of kinda, Michigan. That's kind of cool. Um, but you know, it's cool. I, you know, it's one of those things too. Like, I, 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 I want to support local. Yeah, and exactly. Do I want to support I know a lot of these guys that are in there sweating and they're in there looking at the wallets and, you know, they, they put their money forward and those are the guys that I'm going to support. So, you yeah. know, I'm excited about more brewing beers being in town. 
Um, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you I won't be there. <laughs> yeah. If it brings more but, attention to the Fort Wayne beer market, that's always a good thing. Absolutely. Too. So yep. yeah, I'm almost always uh, Fortlandia dot line two times. Kind of that's kind of where I yeah, spend my time. Summit mm-hmm. city. Hmm. Yeah. Summit city is on the opposite side of town for me. So I hardly ever make it over there. But Ooh. back in the day before Tom's and dot line, and Fort Wayne, that's, that's where I always at. Yep. So that was the place. So yeah, for sure. Um, and it's and one of those Anthony. things where it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's Fort Wayne beer. It's, it's where it's, where it's at. So, you know, I hope to bring science product here one day and even if it's just a tap room or if it's a, a production brewery, whatever it's going to be. Uh, That'd be you know, awesome. We want to, yeah. want to do that. So, but yeah, yeah. it's Fort Wayne beer, man. It's, it's, it's always booming. So. I love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> As the beer drinker. Definitely. As the beer drinker. I'm like, Because we talked about this on the show before that Paul and I coming from the Fort Wayne side that a lot of the guys who really can and market their stuff, a lot of the new beers, Dot Line, Two Toms, and then, you know, Summit City has been a little slow with that. Hop River has been slow with that. Hop River has been canning quite a bit. Junk Ditch just kind of, I think, focused more on the restaurant side. They're not really into the whole beer scene as much. It hasn't really exploded. So it's like we have a lot of Dot Line. Two breweries. (laughs) Yeah, two breweries in Fort Wayne. It's like Mm -hmm. that's all we can get our hands on. To yeah. review on the show and that's so. kind of like you know one of the things that we, you know, we're, we're probably too honestly we're probably too small to have a full canning situation yeah but we want to give that option as a carryout because we're in an area that you know anyone that's going to lafayette from a foreign area has to go right by us that's true. college kid coming home from there has to go right by us yeah that's me so at this, one point yeah just giving just giving people that opportunity to be able to take some beer with them and we got growlers now which is cool but I mean, growlers might yeah. is a little bit better they last a little bit longer yeah and and and, and it's just one of those things where it's like there's so much work in glassware with that and it's mm-hmm. like I, like i hate it but i also wanted to have an option and right. so um you know we started out with like a little canning line and it just was a piece of junk and we couldn't get work <laughs> right and yeah we, we would we would get hype about releasing cans and get a couple pre-orders coming and we couldn't get our, our lids to seal correctly and mm. you, you know we'd throw get, them all out or something yeah we'd get like four four packs worth out of like 80 cans and oh, you know it was super depressing and super hard up so um ultimately at the end of the day we just said hey we're gonna bite the bullet and we bought a new sealer uh cost us a couple hundred, you know a couple couple dollars we didn't want to spend right um and we're not at the point to buy a whole line because those lines are expensive mm-hmm. yeah um, Wish and, you can get like a used one from a brewery that's going on a business, or something yeah. discounted like that, and yeah. you just get lucky. Yeah, you mm-hmm. almost need to find one at your grandparents' house. And yeah, them. right. <laughs> yep. you know, like for real, that's the bet. Like, because like every time I turn around, I'm like, oh, look, it's an auction. And like, look, everything's selling. And then the canner goes for more than the fermenters in the brewery. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I understand you guys all don't need fermenters, but like, there's no way. I mean, the cheapest one new is like 30 grand. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. And you're like, 30, that's a that's a ton of canned beer that you that's gonna take you years to recoup yeah. yeah um and so the the new sealer should be here knock on some wood this week um and then every beer after hopefully once we get dialed in and it's working correctly again knock on wood uh every beer after that we'll have some cans and so um nice. you know with with what's cool for us where i'm at you know i'm, I'm having to drive there to work and i live here is you know, there's the Ozar app that people are using. Um, mm-hmm. And if you buy through there and make me the proxy, like I can bring it back to Fort Wayne. Um, and it makes sales for us and uh, get you yeah. our beer. And we can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is what, I mean, this is what's cool about it. You, you know, you guys sit around and drink some beers together and, and to you, it's just a hangout time. But for me, like who knows who's going to see this video, who knows, <laughs> you know, or, or the, you know, the podcast, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, like this is marketing for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this will be on the internet forever, so it's like yeah. exactly. Having you guys talk about my beer and and, and you know hopefully enjoying it. <laughs> uh, it <laughs> Try to be nice. Out. And it, it's one of those things where it's like you know I've always I've always said I was like, oh this is a, I want to do a podcast I want, I want to drink beer on podcast. <laughs> so you know you guys are doing it. I, I recently talked to um, the barrel the, chat dudes. Barrel chat, yeah. yeah. So uh, they they just reviewed my beer and hopefully coming out next week. We'll have to see how that works out and. I didn't know um, they were back doing stuff. Yeah, they started. I didn't know because they got us kind of on their network when the, the Hopped Up Network was going, and so oh, we're really? familiar with those guys. And then they went away for like four years, and we've really? still okay. been going. <laughs> we haven't stopped. <laughs> yeah, they commented on one of my pictures the other day, and I was like, "Oh, anytime I can see a podcast, like I, I'm like, hey, what, what can we do to get beer in your hands?" And they stopped through and bought some beer and reviewed it for me. And you know, and like I said earlier on, like 
they might they might hate it it might get smashed <laughs> uh but at the end of the day like it's still they're still saying our name yeah it's, it's still, still out, yeah it's still a way for All us press to is good press and, type thing um, you know and and I, I love to talk i love to meet new people i love to uh be around this you know craft beer in in general so the fact that you guys are doing this and doing it well and, and, and giving you guys a reason to hang out even if it's virtually like this uh, it's, it's cool mm-hmm. so uh, i was pumped about the idea of getting on here and um you know is <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna pump you guys full beer so get ready so well, yeah. perfect <laughs> We yeah, that's sec- that's secretly brewers. why we do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> for the occasional free beer, because we it, it costs us money to do it. We just do it as a fun reason to hang for out. Sure. But, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, and that's one of those things where it's like you know when when I, I saw that message, I was like, oh my gosh, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna they're gonna be reviewing my beer and they're gonna be like, well, since this guy goes to us now and we're not oh, gonna yeah. hear. From <laughs> no. I'm- um, it's we'll, like we'll we're just, not paying you to be here or anything, so it's not like right. an obligation. Yeah, yeah. We so we going... literally <laughs> like recorded the episode. We're just gonna shelve it until we actually did talk. <laughs> we to actually you, so. get to talk yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> until he gets us more beer, we're not ever. Talking <laughs> to him yeah, we won't beer. release this or ever mention it. Uh, Dude, I'll, I'll get a screenshot of just like you guys drinking my beers, like a you know with, wanted with poster, like. <laughs> yeah that's that's how it is but yeah it was cool i mean it was I, I, you guys came out to that great event and it was our first time down in indy and um you know well, i think we'll be back every year now since then and yeah. um you know we're going to uh what, rock the junction next month uh grand, mm-hmm. grand junction i love um, grand junction yeah so and those guys are a killer man like i i I've been in touch with the brewer because of, they have a Blickman system as well. And then getting to meet those guys there at that event. Um, and they invited us out and it was like, it was super chill and there's other cool. And, um, you know, just kind of the things that we're doing. And, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I love talking beer and I, and I love selling our, uh, selling our brand now at this point, like, um, you know, it's something I fully believe in and, and, and I'm not exactly where I, I want to be at with my beers just yet. I mean, we're probably hey, so 50 or 55 beers in pretty new. Yeah, in the system. Um, this is my first commercial gig, but um, you know, I, I think the one good thing is I've always uh, prided myself on if I'm going to brew a beer, I want to I, w- I want to make sure I know what I'm doing, and um, and so that was the goal. You know, I've researched the ingredients and understood what's going on, and um, and kind of went from there. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of I, I mean, I, I love brewing beer, I love making beer, I love drinking beer. It's <laughs> beer, beer, beer all the time. So. Um, <laughs> And it's it's a lot of fun, and I love what you guys are doing on here too. And it's a cool a- atmosphere, awesome. and I you know I hope everything blows up the way it blows up, and that's we'll all good. That yeah, so, we'll hope so as well. uh, but yeah, it's it's fun. It's uh, you know, and honestly, I think I mentioned I might have mentioned to you guys already. We we should really throw down a collaboration for real. Like, yeah, I I would do it. I would be <laughs> absolutely game. Like, yeah, we brewed with Bird Boy about yeah. three four years ago. Yeah, I would be I would be so game. Like, I mean, the idea, like, again, it's it's a beer podcast, but it's it's also nerdy, and this is what I'm nerdy about. So, um, you know, this summer when we when I get more, my my schedule looks a little bit more normal. Um, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll get in touch and figure something out, and that'd be great. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. have you guys in, and you know, we'll throw your, throw your logo on the bottle and or be, or a can depending on what we do. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, I would love that. Awesome. So that would be so much fun. Yeah, drink in geek stout. Yeah, Ooh, <laughs> I would love that. So, <laughs> so would you guys? Uh, when I mean, is there a, a brewery? I mean, I know you guys in Fort Wayne, you know, two times in Dot Lines is going to accessible, but is there anything that's not Indiana that you guys are like real, real into drinking and try to get hands on or like to go to or not Indiana? Yeah, not Indiana. All right, um, I've probably the most traveled. That is true. Yeah, you've been to uh, a lot, Dustin. Um, <laughs> so anything up in the Grand Rapids area has been f- just fantastic. Dope, yeah. Uh, and like, same as Kalamazoo. I tried to not like mm-hmm. rave about Bells or New Holland because they're so commercial, but like those are just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there's like a brewery that I would like to be here that I could visit, more would probably be like Rheingeist. I love that. Yeah. So I talked with one of the the people there at Rheingeist and I was like, you guys just feel like a little sun, you know, like a little sun king mm-hmm. to me. And they're like, yeah, well, because the head brewer 
or the owner or whatever. Yeah, they did a collab. Came from a came years from ago. Sun King. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So he started his brewery after being at Sun King. I was like, damn. I hope that wasn't disrespectful, that but it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what, we got bad one. subjects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right>. And <laughs> their location's sick too. I mean, yeah. the, if you've ever been in the summer, man, the rooftop is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We you went know, and- in August for my quote unquote birthday, like our, our guys weekend, it was hijacking my birthday and we went and went ax throwing and went to all the different uh, breweries in Cincinnati. And one of the places we closed down was Ryan guys. They're like the only place open until like three o'clock in the morning. I was like, this is mm. insane. Wow. That's, I did not know they were open that late. Yeah. I don't think it was quite three. I was pretty drunk that night, but it was, <laughs> it was really late. It was way past one o'clock by the time we left. So, <laughs> I'll tell you what. But the simple fact that they have, you know, an upstairs and then an upstairs and they have yeah. like a hundred of their own beers on tap is like insane That's to amazing. me. Yeah, I, I uh, Cincinnati is, I mean, I love Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, I'm not a Reds fan, but I like to, when my, when my team's in town, it's cheap to go there. And Yep, the Great uh, American yeah. is great for a reason. Oh, yep. dude. Yeah. Absolutely. The craft beer scene there is phenomenal. So yeah. uh, a lot of fun and. You know, I've had there's a there's a guy making YouTube videos out from Carthage Brewery. It's a, Adam makes beer. Adam knows Adam makes beer. I think is what it's called. But um, talking to him on Instagram and stuff has been awesome. And like I'm trying to make it go see him. And uh, there's a time uh, my my wife's grandparents lived out in Cincinnati, so they're big uh, graders and Skyline oh, fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's a time I woke up one day and I was not busy, I guess, uh, and saw that a brewery had brewed a black raspberry chip stout with their ice cream and Ooh. i just for the moment drove three and a half hours to cincinnati just, and <laughs> got that, that sounds phenomenal that was it worth uh, the trip uh no oh. <laughs> it was good it was good oh. it wasn't it, the spur of the moment thing was uh, and I don't know, halfway like, there. did it again so i they must have not liked it either but uh, <laughs> it was good i mean I, I i liked it but it was just not what i wanted it to be but yeah, Cincinnati is great, man. It's, and I think the same thing with Grand Rapids. Like, like we're very spoiled with the the beer cities around us for sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, St. Louis got Chicago. Chicago, yeah. I like Revolution. I don't, I don't get out much, so I haven't really been to any of the outside of Indiana breweries. But I love the Revolutionary as those uh, high hero packs they release like oh, every yeah. year. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love all those IPAs. Those are good. And I think that's one of the things too that I'm like real interested. You know, like. Uh, the uh, quote unquote sellouts that we have now where they sell to Anheuser Busch or they sell to, yeah, the yeah, yeah. you know, as a, as a craft brewer, I'm like, this is like, or as a home brewer, I was like, this is stupid. Like, why would you do this? Like, nah, nah. but as a craft beer drinker, I'm like, bring those bad boys to the city. Like, let's go. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, I went, I was on a huge space dust kick for a long time. Oh, oh yeah. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm good. like, Oh, and then they sold and out. Like, <laughs> yeah, and my buddy, I'm like, my buddy's like, do you like them? You know, they, they sold the Anheuser Bush, and I'm like, what? Like, I feel like they <laughs> have this, and I'm like, oh well, I mean, that and wings go together very well. So I <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, uh, either never get to drink it or support a major beer company. Yeah, I mean, and, it, it, and, I, and I'll tell you right now, the the best beer tour I've ever been on, Anheuser Bush. Like, oh um, yeah, I went there. It in was, was wonderful. I did the brewer toy tour mm-hmm. there, and it, my wife still talks about it. Like, <laughs> you know, and we've done like every tour we could possibly do, and it was, um, you know, fresh Bud Light right out of the tap. It's yep. like hours old, and I'm like, whoa, like, mm. you and know, they just like pour it off the line for you. You're like, shit, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you open the fridge and say, drink as much as you want. You're in here for 20 minutes. I'm like. Challenge accepted. Like <laughs> you got it. You got you got some shotgun these bad boys with. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's it's it is it sucks, but it, we get to we get to experience new things and mm-hmm. uh, you know if Goose Island would have never done what they did, we would never have BCBS uh, right as yep. often or as as commercialized or um, you know. And I think that's it's a it's a hit or miss how I feel about it sometimes. But most times I'm like, hey, you know, it is what it is. I see why. I mean. Someone walked into Science Project today and, and offered you a million dollars. Yeah, or I guarantee it's hard to turn it down. They would sell the company. <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it uh, makes sense. I mean, it's just like but, any other business. If you get bought out, like you're pretty hard pressed not to 
sell the company. So I don't yeah. see why it would be any different mm-hmm. if you're like a brewery. Yeah. You're it's, a seller. Good job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? You know, they're like, hey, you can't open another brewery for seven years. And you're like, I regret it. Open the first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would take all my time and like, suck the life out of me. <laughs> oh, fine. I'm a full time teacher, anyways. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm like, I, I was like, I think this is, how, you know, that's how it goes. But, uh, you know, and that's like uh, Wicked Weed down in Asheville. Like, I, I felt mm-hmm. their double IPA and I was like, oh, this is so good. And, and they were the more of the more recent ones to sell. And uh, their Sour House, the Funkatorium down there, their sour beers are one of a kind. And um, I would put them against Upland at any day of the week. But I still drink their sours because I'm like, well, they don't mass produce those. But everything else is, you know. And uh, but every time I'm out there getting the fries from Wicked Weed just so I can <laughs> – uh, it is what it is, but <laughs> you know. I will say uh, somebody sent us a treehouse beer one time. Ooh. Yes, that I was just going to mention phenomenal. that. Treehouse was good. Mm. Keith and I out of Massachusetts. That. Yeah, that, that needs yeah. to come to Fort Wayne. Come to Indiana. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll travel to get that. Yeah, they don't they distribute tra- that. Started that hazy trend. It seems like. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hit a. What was it summer of twenty one? We did a, a, a northeast state road trip, um, and hit like other half in New York, in New York City and a trillion mm-hmm. awesome. good. And I, I was blown away, man. The, the, the beers were, you know, just one of a kind. But their hazies are just super unique, like super mm-hmm. unique. Um, I don't know what it is also, but let me see if I can find it. I had just had, so Thursday night, um, Four Fathers Brewing out of Valparaiso. Oh, you've heard of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a, like a tap takeover like thing at the Bonus Pints, which is um, an arcade bar in uh logan sport and they brought me some beers in and let me see if I can find and they brought a hazy in it's called lc39 and i think that is the closest i've ever had to a treehouse or trillium hazy oh great wow. like the mouthfeel was amazing like it helps like i'm trying to think if it says it here yeah, it's Galaxy, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Citra. Ooh, those are the best. It, yeah, it's you know, the big hitters, but the yeah. mouthfeel is so – like, I drank it, and, like, the guy was like, oh, yeah, this is this is one of our really good hazies. And I was like, oh, bro, like, you're, you're not lying. Like, this is this is delicious. Like, I'm like, this is – this yeah, like, other half, Trillium, <laughs> Treehouse. Like, and the name sounds like something from Star Wars, one of the droids, LC-39. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The picture is of a spaceship, so I'm not sure. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. You might know it better than I do, but it is it is of some sort of spaceship. It doesn't look like anything I've seen from that, but uh, but it was yeah. delicious. If you see that anywhere, if you don't look out for that, that was, it was Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I, I had never heard anything from them. I mean, I heard about them a couple recent, a couple months ago, maybe, and never had anything. And they brought me some, some beer to try, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is good. So cool. Yeah, there's a beer that I had. Uh, you guys brought up Massachusetts. It reminded me of uh, my in-laws went to Vermont, and they had somebody who lives over there that bought them this beer because they knew they are going to bring it back to me. <laughs> and it was uh, Heady Topper by The Alchemist. That was damn near a five for an IPA for me. It was <laughs> really good. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh... If you guys ever get a chance to end up in Philly, um, there's a bar called Monks, and they're known for their – what is this? It's some kind of shellfish, like not oysters, but not clams. I don't know what it is, something. Um, but so I had Hetty Topper one time. Uh, my father-in-law works in insurance, and he had a guy in Philly who got him a Hetty Topper. We shared it in Florida one year. Fell in love. Oh, this is so good. It's so good. And then the next year, he got sent out to San Francisco when the when the whole state of California was on fire, and and he brought me back Pliny, the elder out there. Oh God, I've always Ooh. wanted to try that. That's and, on my wish list. Yeah. And let me tell you guys, like, if I can get my hands on one for you, I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely give it to you to share. Mm. It's, it's either it's one Pliny, the elder, or younger. Like, yeah, yeah whichever it. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was in San Francisco for a week and I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. And and so when I went to Monk's, uh, same 2017 or 2021 summer, um, we went there to eat and I'm looking at the beer menu and I was able to have 
draft Pliny and a can of Heady in the same same sitting. Oh, I was wow. like, this is heaven. Like, <laughs> Best day ever. Thank you. <laughs> so, because um, I mean, I think that's what, you know, when I really got into craft beer, IPAs, I, I would drink Sunlight or, yeah, Sunlight Cream Ale, Sun King, and then Osiris. Mm-hmm. And then my world just completely fell apart craft beer wise. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was that guy chasing zombie dust around the oh, entire yeah. state of Indiana. I was, yep. you know, and then it was just like everywhere. You know, I can remember the first time I had zombie dust, it was, uh, the liquor store in Muncie released that they had six six packs, mm-hmm. and they were selling them by the bottle. It used to okay. be a fight to get them. And wow. I rolled up, was at the door at the liquor store on a Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday morning at seven a.m. So it was probably like a I, line. Looked like I was a struggle bus there, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got two bottles for eighteen dollars. Wow! Oh, oh my god! Wow! Threw them on ice. Club on bottles. Threw them on ice and drove to Indy. And we shared them at one o'clock in the afternoon that day. <laughs> we both were dying to have it. And uh, I think one of us called off work even to have it. It was. <laughs> wow. Uh, I really remember that. And now you can buy it at the gas station. You can buy you get it, it everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. It's still so, good. It's it, But the hunt oh. isn't as fun. No. Have you had the new the, yeah. the new one? I have one in the fridge, but I haven't tried it yet. But Dustin yeah, the has. Zombie ice. Yeah. yeah. I believe it's called. I've had yeah. I, I did. I several. poured one about a week ago. I've had several. Of them. Excellent. Dude. Excellent. I need to get a hold Excellent. of one. Yeah. I need to get a hold of one. I haven't had that yet. Yeah, it's, it's just a bigger version. Uh, Does it, is Kroger, it higher? Actually, here in Fort Wayne. So if you're looking to buy a six pack. Oh, really? Yeah. Kroger, Fort Wayne had them. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check that out for it's sure. It's easier to find that than it is to find Robert the Bruce. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can see that. It's hard to find that one. Oh, I fucking I love Robert that. the Bruce. Oh, my God. <laughs> have you guys had the opportunity to share like a Dark Lord before? Yep, one time. Okay. Yeah, my Keith uncle for us. My uncle lived up there, and they participated in Dark Lord Day. Um, Ooh, okay. him and, and all my cousins. So he got us. I think it was a 2017 bottle that we finally busted open on Last the show year. and had. And I remember my first time trying one of those. I'm like, this is like consistency of motor oil, but oh yeah, <laughs> this is so damn good. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that was like my first taste of it. And that that sucker hit me real quick because I'm just down in it. I'm like, yeah. I realize I need to sip this. But yeah, oh my gosh, so good. That's uh yeah, like we look I I want to live a dark lord day one day. <laughs> right. Uh, I think. So, like I said earlier, I, I, I do a lot of buying of beer and not drinking. So, <laughs> I have a lot of verticals that uh, if we ever land this mm. collaboration figured out, we can smash some verticals. Uh, I believe I'm five deep on Dark Lords right now. Damn. So, wow. So we could really, really that turn the experience off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's one of those things where, like, I, I, I normally get – I find someone who has extra bottles and I buy two of the same year. And I drink one and I save one. And oh, nice. so uh, it's kind of how it fell. I mean, it's just, again, spending money on dumb things and <laughs> to sit around. And But it's the opportunity to have like a, a three or four year, five year run. Oh, yeah. Be cool. So uh, yeah, that. And I started a Bigfoot barley wine from Sierra Nevada because oh. I found <laughs> a 2005 one time. Wow. And so I was like, I'm gonna start doing this one too, but that's only like, it's it's there's a big gap, like, yeah. uh, so, but yeah, I, I collect beers. I don't know why I don't drink them. And <laughs> you had the the Woots <laughs> out from Stone. Uh, I've had a small pour of it. I really enjoyed that beer too. Yeah, the Will those I was good. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to collect those, but they've got easy to find, and now I can't find them again. So I don't know what happened mm-hmm. if they're not doing it anymore or what. But I yeah. love that beer. Well, it's like Bigfoot here in Fort Wayne. It's hard to find. But when yeah. if you go to Sierra Nevada, they're like, there's 12,000. <laughs> it's like $9 for a six pack of 12% barley wine. I'm like, or 10% barley, whatever it is. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I can't find one bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like we, we kind of start this like tradition of where we buy all these really nice stouts and whatever else. Um we we when I bought this house in 2018, uh, it was my wife and I's first house, and we were living at her in or her parents' house before we bought a house. And uh, I had a small mini fridge of like the more rare beers, mm-hmm. and I was like, and we bought it, it. We closed like December 3rd or 4th, and so we were doing some remodel stuff before we moved in. And I was like, I don't want to move this mini fridge of beer over there. <laughs> so Christmas Eve, we did a bottle share. And nice. It was like 12 bottles. 
And we were like, this is so much fun. You know, she's the oldest of five. So, you know, there's, there's always like eight people drinking. Yeah. Like, and so the next year we're like, let's do, let's do it again. Well, uh, guys, I'm saying like, it was, it was probably 40 bottles deep of stuff. Wow, uh, man. We Whoa. had our, we had our first puker that year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the next year we toned it down and it became a two day event and we spread it out. <laughs> toned and down then, and made it two days. Uh, and then in 2020 it became a, because we didn't leave for vacation like we normally do at Christmas break or Christmas time. It was like a six day event. And we just kept drinking. Wow. Man. And then the last couple of years, it's been like, we do maybe 10 bottles over Christmas time. And I'm like, guys, I have too many bottles. So I only do 10 bottles. Like we need to <laughs> step it up. <laughs> Where's the drinkers at? We need to do 40 bottles this week. We've got mouths. If you need some extra mouths. Hey, uh. I can put on one hell of a bottle share, man. We don't have to do it. That'd be excellent. Oh. I love that. I have like mm-hmm. 300 bottles of shadow. Yeah, I got I a need fridge to get full of crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, we're right uh, on, man. I wanted to ask a quick question. Uh, we used yeah. to do a segment on the show called Strange Brew. It's hard to do now because the concept was we would bring a weird beer and then try to, the other guys would try to guess what it was. We can't really do that virtually. So, we don't yeah. do it anymore. But is there like a weird beer or a unique beer that you've made or that you've tried that stands out? Oh. Nowadays it's hard because like everything is everything's ex- weird. Now. Yeah, I feel like everything is weird. When we started, it was like, oh, this one has raspberry in it. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this has yeah. strawberry and chocolate. Weird. Yeah. There's a couple things I can think of in my head. There's a, a Bloody Mary beer that I think uh oh, that's pretty weird. Who is that? It's it's a Cincinnati brewery. Um, what are what is their name? The Sour House and they do a bunch of sours out of um Cincinnati. Urban Artifact. Oh, okay. We had, we had a uh, we went there one night uh, before we flew out of Cincinnati, and they had a, a Bloody Mary beer on. Um, I'm not a tomatoes guy. It's just not not me. Yeah, I'm not a Bloody Mary dude. But of course, I tried it, and it it, it was a Bloody Mary. Uh, I don't know how to explain how it's different than a beer or, a beer or a cocktail, or whatever. Yeah. Um, the one that like instantly when you said like weird things that like it came to me. Um. When we went to Mardi Gras, the, or not Mardi Gras, went to New Orleans for the very first time, uh, it was probably 2017, maybe 2016 even. Um, and it was the first time I had anything from Obita. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got their like strawberry fields lager and Purple we got haze or whatever. Haze. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And my wife found a beer. She, I know, I, I can't believe I don't know the name of it because she, sh- she has a shirt of it. <laughs> Dang, what is that called? They had a Satsuma orange that I always wanted to try. Mm. Oh, okay. Because we can't I, get Satsuma. Because that Satsumas are like a specific type of orange. I, I had to think citrus. about what you were talking about there for a minute. Uh, but yeah, they did a beer with that in it, and I always wanted to try. Uh, My orange guy. Did they call it? Oh, okay, found it. And I gave it a 425. Yeah, Everyone yeah. else that wants to drink this did not agree to it on Untapped. <laughs> um, it was a Louisiana spiced ale, and it literally says, "In Louisiana, we like to spice our food, our lives, and our beer too, with hints of celery, paprika, lemon peel, bay leaves, and a pinch of cayenne." Whoa! Oh this man! Ale, uh, is savory quality of a crawfish boil, and when I tell you that's what it tasted like, it's like they nailed it. Like <laughs> it's. It was amazing. My wife loved it. Like we went back the next year. That's insane. And we're like, "Hey, do you guys happen to have any of this?" And they're like, "Dude, no." Like, Ugh. they're like, "Actually, we have one shirt over there that's like twenty dollars off." Like, we're trying to. Give it away. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wanted it. Everybody <laughs> hated it. And she ran and got it instantly. Uh, and uh, it's been like a sleep shirt for forever. But um, that was the one that I, in my head, and that's when I was kind of, you know. She, my wife is uh, the inspiration for a lot of my weirder beers because uh, we, we have a lot of time spent in a car driving around for vacations or uh, just spent time together. And she'll be, and she'll come up with something crazy. And, uh, you know, like for example, one time she was like, let's do candy and beers. And I'm like, what do you mean? No, just, just <laughs> candy. Put some nerds in there. Yeah, different yeah. candies. And then uh, I was like, absolutely not. That's, that's not a beer ingredient. That's weird. Uh, and, for the Fort Wayne guys who follow Fortlandia at all, uh, their Sour Patch Kid beer. Sour is, yep, yep, yep. 
stupid mm-hmm. good and pulls <laughs> out every time. Yep. And Not so a I chance to try it, but... I told you so moment. <laughs> <laughs> right? You and missed so the boat. It's one of those things where like she it, if Allie had control of the brew room, man, it, it'd be it'd be wild. Like <laughs> <laughs> all the brewery would be this portion of the show. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those things where, you know, it takes some time and to sit on and think about and um, you know, the bananas foster beer was one hundred percent her I and I was beyond hundred percent honest, hundred percent her idea. Um because she's not a stout drinker. So she's like, I love the idea of the king cake stout, but it's not for me. Hmm. Um, and I was like, well, how do you, how do you pull off a bananas foster? And she's like, well, bananas, of course. I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, like <laughs> next, <laughs> like, what else am I gonna... what we do? And, and, and that beer, I mean, it was kind of like, it was a catch all dude. It had, uh, it had cinnamon, caramel syrup. It had bananas foster or bananas puree had vanilla ice cream. Had uh, and fire. then it, we did a ro- uh, a rum extract to get the rum flavor in it, and uh, you know this year we kind of just happened to have a half uh, a two barrel batch of sour that needed fruit, and I was like, I'm gonna release it for Mardi Gras. I'm gonna do it, and um, trying to put the banana puree. We kind of have a process how we put the fruit in there, but I opened up the banana puree and I dropped the bag. Ooh, and no. when, when I tell you uh, any other fruit that if this would have happened. It's a 44-pound bag. Uh, 20 pounds would have been all over the floor. Yeah. I picked up the banana puree it's and out thicker. dropped this, like, gloop of banana yeah. puree. <laughs> <laughs> it was straight baby food. Like, straight. Oh. Oh. And I was like, how? Like, I've already invested all this stuff. The caramel syrup's there. The rum <laughs> extract. Yeah. The cinnamon's all ready to go. And I, and I was like, well, I guess it's a two-barrel batch. So whatever happens, happens. <laughs> <laughs> and... Like not to toot my own horn, but it it came out amazing. Like it was <sighs> my first pour of it. Like I I sent a picture to her and I'm like, yo, like you killed this. Like mm-hmm. this is great, you know. And and it was sad is like I'm the one getting credit for it. But at the end of the day, <laughs> right, yeah. you know, she's sitting there being like, yes, yeah, that was I did that, you know. And um, <laughs> so we we get these weird ideas all the time. And you know, so, I think she Love has an that. ongoing uh, notepad in her phone about Smart. things that she wants to do. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that Louisiana ale for sure is the weirdest thing I've ever mm. tasted. Was uh, it again? Was good. Uh, two Toms that did the bananas froster lost in the yeah. dark or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he's got his his version of it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. One. Barrel aged version of it too. Yeah, mm-hmm. the bottle. Those are good. Um, I think I have that bottle somewhere. Again, <laughs> probably it's probably sitting right over there on the <laughs> <Somewhere>. counter. <laughs> so, my office looks wicked. I mean, like. The amount of muddy that's sitting on a shelf in my office is stupid. <laughs> just in be- liquid form. I, I tell Tom I'm just like single handedly like collecting all of his bottles so that like when he hits it big and over text like Bells or Grand or uh, Founders that I'm gonna have like you one pristine collection of Tom's <laughs> bottles and uh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that that was a that's a cool idea that like the the weirdest tasting things because you know at the homebrew level, man, people put whatever they want. In yeah. There. Yeah. We went to the homebrew Palooza a, a couple of years ago, and okay. that's where we had the craziest time. So many Crazy. unique things there, rather than like the normal. It was all homebrewers, so you're just getting yeah. random samplings rather than just like the normal stuff you get it from Sun King and whatnot. Yeah, really- and it, what's weird too, like you know, sometimes I'm like, did you guys mess this beer up, and so you just said f it, and you just did whatever you wanted, or <laughs> right. this is pl- strategy? Like, you know, we in in the homebrew club now. You know, I tried. I tried to get started in 2020, but it ended up getting started last year when um, we had some new guys join the officer team. We started a master brewer challenge, um, and basically what it was is we picked uh, four different categories: light, dark, hoppy, and specialty, and we separated all the beer styles into those. And what it was a quarterly event, um, and the scoring was like Mario Kart. So <laughs> nice, you got 10 points, and whoever had the most points at the end of the year was the overall master brewer ch- challenge winner. Nice. Uh, but the winner got to brew at different breweries. So um, Jed uh, mm-hmm. won and released Dot and Lines. Uh, Jed, yep. uh, we had that on the show recently. We had that. Yeah, yep. yeah mm-hmm. out. Um, he also won uh, the light category and he did his uh, Cougar Bait at uh, Portlandia. Uh, oh yeah. Then Denny Norman won and did a California comma, common at two times. Oh, that was a good uh, one. That was a good one. And then he won. He won the specialty, and they got to brew at my place. So, I, I actually ended up getting super sick um, and had influenza A, 
the day before. Oh God. We test so I, I tasted the beers, tested positive for influenza A the next day. So I my my taste buds were gone. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're tasting the beers and we're judging them and I was like, I'm gonna let you guys do the do judging on this and I get a text a couple days later and like, Hey, uh, how do you feel about a smoked pepper beer? Mm. And I was like, Oh, I had that. that. It's a smoked beer with peppers. And like, no, no, no. It's an amber ale. And I was like, well, there was a lot of smoke and spice there. And it's like, they smoked the peppers. Mm. And so I was like, you know what? Let's do it. So we just released that Friday, uh, last Friday. And it's delicious. Like, Ooh. there's 14 pounds of Serrano peppers in it that he oh, smoked. Man. I love pepper beers. There's not enough and, of them. And it's just like, the, the spice level is, I mean, like, I'm blown away by how, how well it came out. Um, and I'm like, no one's going to order this. <laughs> Probably not. It, they're, they're not gonna, they're it's not too gonna, scary. It's like it's so good. <laughs> it, it's gonna ruin your palate. Like, do not. <laughs> right. <it. clears throat> but like, it's so good. And I'm like, it's the weird things like that that are like, you know, you got to get risk. I mean, we're, you know, we're not a huge batch brew system, but like, even doing anything risky is it, it's it could be a huge loss for us. So, um, it sucks that it's not like the homebrew side where I'm only doing five gallon batches. Mm-hmm. And I can, like, Three sheets to the wind. And that's what yeah. I love about Brandon at Tarnish Hollow, man. Like, uh, he if you have any of his beers at beer festivals, man, it's, it's <laughs> some of the stuff he pulls out. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, like the crap he I mean, he had he won uh Pax Verum's Way Out Fest last year with nice. like a seven course meal. <sighs> like he had seven different beers that were like <laughs> I I had his uh Nashville hot chicken wheat. <laughs> what? Yeah, hmm. and he gave, he gave you a small shooter of it, as long <sighs> as well as a small shooter of ranch or blue cheese dressing. Oh my god, guys! I'm telling you, wow. it was, I should put that as my most interesting beer, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm kidding. <laughs> like, and and I'm like, how how? Like, what'd you do? And he's just like, yeah, I mean, this and that. I did this and that. I'm like, okay, you're opening a brewery. How are you gonna pull that off? Well, he's he's a one barrel brew house. That's how he's gonna pull that off, and. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. I mean, like the weirdest shit is gonna come out of that brewery, oh, and I love it. I'm so hype about it for him. So hype about it for him. So um, it's fun to do it on a smaller scale at our brewery, um, and still be have success with it. But uh, it is. I mean, I would love to see small breweries just risk everything all the time. But yeah, it's money, mm-hmm. man. You guys, you guys sell beers, right? Mm-hmm. Do you sure. do you do uh, year round beers or like have like a steady? thing that people can look forward to or is are you still in like the experimental getting that idea down so we're, we're slowly we're slowly getting there um i kind of built my setup around kind of how fortlandia does it we always have something light dark hoppy sour yeah you always really, have to have like an ipa and a stout and a yeah we'll always mm-hmm. have one of them at least yeah. um and so like it kind of rotates but like our cream ale we can't keep it on tap so yeah. you know we have we're on our last keg now we brewed it again friday um Hop Rocket is another one that we released and nearly sold out of 800 pints in less than a month. Wow. So mm-hmm. that got brewed on Thursday again. Um, now, hopefully, those two will kind of suffice for a little while when we go into other beers. But um, before this week, we had only repeated two beers out of 55 batches. Damn. So, wow. Uh, that's kind of how it went. Um, we haven't really loved that yet, but um, it's just because. I like to change styles, like you mm-hmm. know, and, and mind you, as a brewer, you know, and it's kind of like tips of the trade, and maybe not everyone does this, but like you know, my hazies, we we developed a good hazy base, so why change it? So we change the hops, and it's yeah. a completely different beer, but it's a very similar when when the mouthfeel and stuff is where it should closely should be where it wants to be, mm-hmm. um, not perfect, but when you get something that's going to be good, you know, even the sours, like the recipe is what it needs to be. Let's change up fruits. Um, but, and they're, and they're totally completely different beers. We have a cheesecake one on right now, a cherry cheesecake, and we have a bananas foster. And then we just released Pog. So it's like orange, passion fruit, and guava. Like, Oof. you know, there's three completely left side different beers, but yeah. um, it's still different releases. So um, it's one of those things where, you know, I had a bunch of recipes that I tried and true that I really liked um, before we even opened, and uh, they've, they've been tested. And then we have some beers that, like, for example, we have an Irish, Irish Red on right now for we released at St. Patrick's Day. 
Um, I had never, ever brewed or written a recipe for one of those ever. Um, and the owner of the company wanted one, and I said, okay, let's try it. So did my research, figured it out, um, and it came out really good. So um, so I would say we always will have something hoppy, something light, something dark, something sour, fruity, uh, but it might not always be the same. Um, we only have five fermenters and 16 taps, so it would be hard to have house beers. Yeah. Uh, really mm-hmm. hard to have house beers. Um, but, you know, if someone's going to come in and drink the hell out of the cream ale and not let it stay on tap, and we're going to do it again mm-hmm. because – we need, you know, yeah, well, it sells. He runs the brewery, so yep, it sells. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was just asking because if there was something people should try when they come in and they listen to this in five years, that might not be an option anymore. So that's why I was like, <laughs> if they have something that's available all the time, but yeah, I would say if you came in and, and you know, I would say obviously my sours or my imperial stouts are my two favorite things that I'm brewing. Um, they're not always going to be the same, but like. You know, You're kind of more I, passionate about or yeah, like, like the stuff you just, like making. Yeah. They're more of a project beer. You know, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're a little bit more they're risky. More of a science bit. project. Yeah. Um, uh, if Hop Rocket's on, nice little pun there. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, Try to if Hop Rocket's on, um, I love our Hop Rocket recipe. Um, it's, you know, light colored IPA, super uh, up front, more American style. Uh, Citra mosaic, so it's. Ooh, I'm looking forward to trying that. Billy. You know, it's an easy, it's an easy, you know, good hop choice. Easy, you know, the hops does all the work for me. Um, our into the Milky Way hazy is kind of another one that's um, I really like because it's again, it's the three big hitters: Galaxy, Citra, Mosaic, and uh, so those are right. our two. I mean, those those are like the two big IPAs, and our light ales are you know the cream ale, our brass, our brass ring. Um, we can't keep it on tap. I mean, it's literally like, it's the thing that everyone's like, oh, I only drink Bud Light or Miller Light or Bush Light, and right, them too, and they stay around for it. So, um, and then the American wheat too. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you know, with, with the Indiana Brewers Cup coming up with at uh, the State Fair this year, I'm um, hoping to pull down some commercial medals this time. We we have some homebrew medals, but if uh, anything medals down there, you might see it more often. So yeah, that makes cool. sense. Yeah. You know, one of those things that we can kind of put that on its on its name tag and kind of roll with it. So, um, Inception of the Old World is a an international pale lager that we won gold with back in twenty one as a home brewer. Um, and the Blonde's Hot Friend Amber, um, the Blonde's Hot Friend, which is an amber ale, uh, is uh, we took second in twenty eighteen. So um, those two are coming back here next couple weeks to um, be entered again in that festival and try to get some medals <laughs> on the professional side. So cool yeah. yeah so yeah sours and, and the stouts are where I, I, I that's where I, I feel the most comfortable on so I, I love adjunct stouts i've had a ton of them and that's kind of what i like and then the sours are um, you know they're, they're all the rage right now and it's yeah uh, it's something that I've, i feel like you know the fruiting combinations and the changing stuff is kind of cool so I feel like I was going to say you're into the Milky Way should have Milky Way candy bars into it, but maybe that's illegal. <laughs> you get in trouble. Well, we just dropped. Uh, oh, I guess we didn't drop it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's dropping soon. Um, it's on, it's going to be on tap at Rough Draft probably before it's on tap at our place. But um, our, I have an assistant brewer named Mike Duke, and uh, he is seriously a godsend to, Never brewed anything in his life other than like one batch, one couple batches of homebrew with his dad. But he was really interested in it. He runs the kitchen at the local coffee shop right across the street from us. And uh, we were brewing one night. And he's like, "Have you ever done anything with uh, Girl Scout cookies?" Oh. And I was like, uh, "Yeah, I, I have, but it's, it's you know a lot of them lean towards stouts." Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. we're kind of stout heavy right now." I'm like, "Yeah, you know maybe you know next year or whatever." He's like, what about the lemon cookies? And I was like, oh, yeah. never done anything with that. And uh, he was like, we could do a sour with it. And I was like, you know, dude, that's kind of a brilliant idea. It's kind of smart. That is like, good. Okay. I'm like, when when are we brewing a sour again? And uh, he's like, I don't know why you're asking me. You have the schedule. I'm like, <laughs> okay, sure. And I, I'm like, what'd you mill today? Like, we, could, we could switch it out. And he's, you know, he told me what we milled. And I was like, oh, dude, we're brewing a sour tomorrow. He's like, let's, <laughs> find, I was like, let's find girls cookies. So, yeah. Uh, we called two local troops, got 20 boxes of cookies in that night, um, and brewed what we are calling the the first edition of Badge Explorer. Um, oh, yeah. Not that. I like nice. that. 
So the idea is like the can label will be like the sash mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the first badge is a beer and the second one's a lemon for the lemon cookie and we'll add to it. Um, mm -hmm. So it didn't come out the exact way I want. I wanted it to be more of a smoothie like, um, but I had it yesterday at Rough Drafts uh, industrial or industry night um, for the first time. And when I tell you it's going to be the best lemonade, like mm. sour drinking, beer for the summer like i'm hyped like i'm ready to like that's incredible put it on like warm weather put it on let's go so nice um, it's a nice little five percenter that uh, drinks very well like lemonade um tart you don't really get the cookie flavor out of which it's unfortunate um but the lemons but it, come through enough yeah the lemons come through and the lemon puree comes through and it's it was it's fun man so uh, that's cool you know just we're have to add just, more boxes of cookies next time maybe oh yeah some <laughs> some <laughs> And I mean, and I think, you know, I'm not sure how you guys drink your stouts, but like if you let, you know, I always pour two glasses of every stout I drink. One I'm drinking right then and one I'm going to come back to in probably at 40, 35, 40 minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. The yeah. flavor is always way it's better. Way, one. yeah. Yep. Um, and so I think what I'll do is when I, when we tap that beer, I'll, I'll do the same thing with that, uh, the sour and see if maybe that cookie flavor. Yeah. Then, but we put 20 boxes in the actual batch and then we put, um, another 10 crumbled up in the bright tank as we carbonated it with the lemon puree. So mm -hmm. uh, there's gotta be some cookie flavor in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, just gotta, I just gotta find it. So, um, but yeah, we got some cool things coming out. I mean, we got that and then we just dropped the pepper beer. Um, actually I lied to you. We're getting ready. We're getting ready to get really boring with the beer styles. We're, <laughs> uh, we're doing a Mexican style lager for Cinco de Mayo. Um, That's good. I like mm -hmm. those. Well, we're doing a mango like party beer for the same event where it's like mango puree and mango ice cream and uh, a thick like smoothie sour that um have you guys ever had a tasty whip damn it from hop lore the pineapple oh. dole whip mm -hmm. smoothie sour? i've seen it but I I, so. i've heard of it but oh, never. I, my wife had it a couple of years ago at the bluffton beer fest event and uh so we use that as like our first like test smoothie sour um and the amount of people that have asked for it since uh it's getting rebrewed it's 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 coming uh so that's coming out and then really it's like some lagers some a uh, blonde uh an amber some wheats like getting ready for the brewer's cup um and kind of the summer drinking you know yeah um but, you know, we got some cool style ideas coming up with Brandon. We have some stuff we got going on ourselves and uh, just having fun, man. It's, it's, it's what I want it to be, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of an adventure with your taste buds. And <laughs> um, I, see, I see beer making and drinking as like culinary, just like food. And mm -hmm. um, it's a journey, man. So, uh, you know, just different things that we want to pull off and do. And, you know, we're doing an IPA for the Indy 500. And, oh, nice. You know, working on a, a house divided uh, four pack for the IU Purdue game next year and, and, and at Thanksgiving. The old uh, oak and bucket. Oh. You know, just this fun beer. things, man. Just tying in the end and yeah, getting people drinking. You know, mm -hmm. that's <laughs> right. the goal. So, uh, love it. But yeah, we're about to get kind of boring. I mean, I guess it's, it's, <laughs> it's, so it's it sucks to say it that way because the beers are really good, but it's just uh. Nothing kind of they're, yeah, they're not strange or super yeah, yeah so crazy. Uh, cool. I think that's a good probably point to end on. I don't want to keep that you works. too long, but uh, yeah, you, I have a question that you may not know the answer to, being from Fort Wayne. But if I make a trip to Logan's Point, Logan's Port, is there something else I can do besides the brewery? Is there anything <laughs> else I should check out while I'm in that area if I make that trip? You, mean you want to do something more than just science project? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it'll make a day of it. Sure. Uh, I mean, if you came up this way, uh, we do have an arcade bar that's attached oh. to a, uh, a record store. So if you're into vinyl. That sounds cool. That's probably what I said. I, I, I do geek out, geek out about that. I should have mentioned that earlier. That's It is record store day today. I, yeah, I, I am a vinyl guy. <laughs> um, so that's cool. And, and they always have, uh, if, you, and if you do it on a weekend, um, they do a lot of live music there, like really cool bands. Oh, that's uh, excellent. And they got, I do a lot. They do a lot of Indiana beer on tap too there, which is cool. Um, uh, come for Mexican food if you like Mexican food. It's, I do. Uh, there's, mm -hmm. there's. I think there's. I think I counted them the other day. There's like seven uh, walking distance Mexican restaurants. Wow. In the brewery. So, wow. Oh, nice. uh, 
the best one is right across the street, Taco Tuesday there. Uh, nearly every Tuesday, I they see my debit card, so <laughs> <laughs> delicious every Tuesday. Um, what else is over here? Really, yeah, I, I haven't really experienced. I haven't really experienced a summer there where I wasn't working full time and yeah, you know, in and out. But um, Peru's got another brewery that you can check out, Seven Pillars. Uh, there's a brewery getting ready to open in Delphi, which is about 20 minutes away from us called uh, Fontana Farms. Really? There's nothing in Delphi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Uh, Monticello obviously has some stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Copacetic. Yeah. Copacetic's over there. Yeah. Um, there's another brewery over there, too, somewhere close. But yeah. um, really, there's not much to do in Lovensport. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You gave us some good ideas, though. That, that, oh, yeah. I, like. I think there's like a. Uh, like a what's it called? A quarry that you can swim in if you if you're in. A <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, if that's it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know how it goes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's like your typical smaller Indiana town. It's, I mean, I think there's like seventeen thousand there in Logansport, and um, but it's I think it's booming, man. It's it's a lot of you know we looked at a lot of uh, buildings when we were looking for our building, and uh, things just weren't uh, up like up, up to date. Like there's a lot of rundown mm-hmm. things and. You know, people just don't want to do any of the work anymore and they're not and, and able to find someone that wants to do the work for them. Um, and it's so it's kind of sad to see, but people are really starting to put money in the town and businesses are coming in and doing things. And uh, they just got a Culver's, uh, which is huge for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, I've never, ever, ever uh, literally nearly crashed my car because of the traffic. Uh, they opened a Wendy's and uh, the drive through line was Crappy. miles long <laughs> cars on the main road god, like, oh my gosh i'm like driving and everyone starts slamming on their brakes i'm like what's going on and then people start going around people and i'm like this is all for wendy's, wendy's? <laughs> you're not wow like, you're not giving away food are you like am i missing something like is there uh, a frosty in my future what's going on yeah, what yeah. is happening um well, yeah i mean if i was you if if i had to make a suggestion i i think i would like come up like 31 or whatever that is mm-hmm. uh, hit come through hit Peru's seven pillars check them out um i enjoyed their, their the beer i had from them and the pizza that i had from them um uh save your pizza for our place though but uh, <laughs> oh yeah you got food come over too. you know drink some beer at our place have have pizza check out bonus pints but i think i'd i'd make definitely make it over to either like uh if fontana farms opens up uh before you come up or um, head out towards La- Lafayette and check out the breweries there because um, there. I mean, those guys are really cool over there, and I've, I've never met anyone over there that I wouldn't su- support and send you their way. But um, I think it's booming, man. It's kind of one of those things where it's like it just needs some time. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and we're we're kind of there's a we're couple of us on the ground talking, ground floor. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of us talking about some kind of like US twenty four like beer trail where like Delphi and mm-hmm. and us, and then like. Uh, I think Chapman's is still either in Wabash or in Huntington. No, not Huntington anymore. So maybe they're in Wabash. So maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. I haven't. I don't remember that. I can't remember if that's true or not. But there's somebody else took over route. that Huntington spot. I don't remember who it was. Uh, well, Junk Ditch is in Huntington. Yeah, that's it. That's what that's that is. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it's in the same spot. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah, they they open a tap room there too now. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to it's hard to suggest like. That's kind of where, where I'm kind of stuck at is, you know, we're like, we don't want to really send a bunch of beer out distribution wise um, because we need a beer in the house. We don't <laughs> yeah, be right. Um, I mean, Wendy's is so popular. It sounds like you need to make a spicy chicken beer or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brandon, I'm not taking your idea if you're listening. <laughs> um, but it's just hard to be like in, in this little town where, um, there's not a lot of draw yet. Yeah. And it's, it, that, that's probably one of the unfortunate parts where it's like, you know, we need a couple more breweries to pop up and mm-hmm. open up um, to kind of make a circle or make a loop out of stuff for these indie people. Mm-hmm. And, yep. uh, and so we're always looking and, you know, ideas to get some taps down there in, in Indianapolis. And we have some taps coming here in Fort Wayne. Now we're on an Acme where we have, we have three deep at rough draft when they open in two weeks. And then uh, up in Garrett at the pizza place that opened up there recently. Uh, coterie i think it's called uh, they gave us a tap permanently as well so uh, hot rocket is up there um acme has our wheat and our smoke they'll have our smoked pepper beer next week uh, and then <laughs> Rough Draft will have uh life of the marty the lemon sour and our pale ale so far cool. um you're gonna see a lot of our cool stuff come through rough draft because 
uh, I love those guys and I can't wait to support them. But um, yeah, it's hard to say, man. Logan sport is kind of just, you know, and, and, and what's weird is everybody knows everybody. So <laughs> yeah, I could, those towns. Yep. Like cheers. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so people walk in, Oh, I haven't seen you for years. But if you ask anyone where you should go to eat, they have nothing for you. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. the Wendy's, do you guys not <laughs> the new- town? like, you guys eat at home every night? Like, what, what, what's going yeah. on? You know, my, when my wife comes over, it's like, where, where are we going to dinner at? I'm like, well, I mean, I don't know. Because I asked. Place? They can't tell me. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, you're an outsider. That's... We're not telling you. You're an outsider. You know? <laughs> yeah, it, that's how it feels. Uh, you know, you can only eat so much. I mean, I love my pizza. Our pizza is science project. But I can only eat it so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before Overwhelm I can eat pizza. something else. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> You know, like I went to the B Dubs one time, and I'm like, "Hey, you guys want to have local beer here on draft?" And they're like, "We don't have a brewery in town." I'm like, oh, "Okay, yeah, I guess we're no. cool. not that I'm wearing all the merch I possibly own." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's just weird, man. It's 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 kind of crazy. Like I guess you know, in Fort Wayne, if something opens up, and you know, we had that California burger open up down here by my house, and. You it was on like the local news or something. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and the line the line is thirty cars deep every time I drive by. It's been open for yep. two weeks. You know, it's, the one in India was the same way. Yeah, it's it's wild, and it's like, you know, Yats just opened up in uh, in Jefferson Point. Well, I went in there the other night. The standing room only, out the door. <laughs> yeah, this is like, amazing. You know, I'm like, I think we're getting ready to get a what's it a chicken salad chick uh, next mm-hmm. month next yep. week. Mm. it's gonna be the same way it'll be yep. lying out the door and but in logan sport man we open up and it's like the bank that's like right around the dude <laughs> i'm talking but we we had a night where we had too many dough balls up over on a monday night we're closed tuesday and wednesday and uh so our owner decided let's make, make pizzas up for the police station the hospital and the fire station i'm like yeah great it's a good idea nice yeah i was like i'll take the hospital ones on my way out of town so I roll over there, and it's, they, they still mandate masks there. So I put a mask on, and, but I'm wearing a Science Project hat, Science Project hoodie, because I was working that day, and, you know, I always wear the merch run there. And I walk up, and they're like, uh, is this for someone's room? And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, you know, I work over at the brewery here in town, and we had some extra dough balls. So these pizzas are, we made for you guys. Feel free to put them in a break room, eat them up. Uh, you know, they're all labeled with what beer, what pizza they are. Um, and there's a menu here so you can see what's on what pizza before you even open it, whatever. You know, thank you for all you guys do. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, where are you from? And I was like, um, science project, just on the street. He's like, what is it? I'm like, it's a brewery, brewery? restaurant. It's a place and we brew our own beer there. We have a brewery in town? And I'm like, dude. Oh, like, Lord. You go to the top floor of this? You, you can, can see, see our outdoor section. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's right there. Yeah, like, 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 Jeez. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, whatever. And he got on and left us a really nice review on Google. And I was like, like, come, come, just come yeah. to the brewery. Yeah. Like our outdoor section has a bunch of like color for sales and stuff, like, like sunblock things. And I'm like, how do you not drive by and see that and be like, what is that? Right. Yeah. You know? Everybody knows each other. You would think everybody's talking about, oh, what's this new place coming in town? I yeah, see the paint coming up or whatever. You know, and I oh. figured we'd have the problem like, you know, everyone was like, you're going to have bush light? You're going to have bush light? You're going to have bush light? No. But like, <laughs> I didn't know I had the problem of we needed to put up a neon sign on every single corner to tell them we're open the brewery. Yeah. yeah. We're not um, a freaking, yeah. They think uh, you're like yeah. an actual science project, <laughs> like lab. <in> <laughs> yeah. We're going to get one of those, uh, what was it? Uh, I'm ruining my joke here. Oh, the little Caesars guys. Like, <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Yes. Food here. Been in the yeah. sign. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, I, it's, it's a fun little town. You know, it's cool to see. You know, we, we do have a carousel there um, that originally was in Fort Wayne. Um, mm. That I guess if you grab, there's like a little thing you grab rings from. So you lean over and you pick a thing off this oh, yeah. rack. Uh, and if you get a brass one, you get to uh, ride for free again. <laughs> um so our cream ale conveniently is called grab the brass ring um oh, that's cool. yeah. i love tying that and in. uh so it's one of those things like it's it's a small town it's always it's always booming and uh i'm just hoping that uh we get some more stuff to pull people in like you like you want to go so um yeah mexican food wendy's <laughs> <laughs> Walmart, you know. popular wendy's in india all right uh, <laughs> i'm telling you all right before we close out uh where can we find you socials or whatever yes yeah, so of operation 
hours operation. So we're open a uh, Wednesday to Monday, uh, four to nine, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I believe four to 10 and four to 11 Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday we're open until six. Um, Monday is four to nine as well. Uh, close Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Instagram, science project brewing, Facebook, same thing. Science project brewing. Um, again, like a, it's basically a tap room only, uh, service. We do have some taps in Fort Wayne at Acme, uh, Coterie and Garrett, Indiana and rough draft tap room. Um, here on Wells, that's going to open up in Fort Wayne. Uh, what else do we have on social? ScienceFactoryBrewing.com is our website. Uh, not as updated as it should be. Uh, I wanted to say. Do what? It's a beautiful website. I was just <laughs> it, it, the guy who made it is a good friend of mine. He killed it, but we have not updated it as much as we should. So uh, it, hopefully that gets changed. We're, we're, we have carry out pizza now, guys, on the website. Oh, wow. New world. Like, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited about it. So the website's about to get an overhaul, but um, Science Project Brewing, uh, social Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, we have a Twitter we don't use. We have a TikTok that we don't, you don't want to watch, so we don't use that either. <laughs> but I, I made sure to make the account. So, uh, so nobody steals it. Yeah, and, and then you can find us at, at the brewery. Or we do a handful of beer festivals every year. And uh, so like for your, your indie listeners, I think we're down at Grand Junction in May. Um is Lawrence down there by you guys? Like yeah, of- yeah, it's on the east side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so we'll be down there. In, I think it's October for Loggers of Lawrence yep. or September for Loggers of Lawrence. Yep, yeah, been we there. there is. Um, we'll be at the State Fair for the Indiana Brewers Cup in July. I gotta uh, go to that. I think that's all we're at currently. Sweet. Of right now in Indy, uh, Fort Wayne. I think we're gonna come to Brewed in the Fort, and then uh, probably that's it up here. I think, but yeah. So that's that. Wonderful. Cool. That's well, awesome. Sounds Great. good. Big thank you to you guys, man. I appreciate your time. No, well, thanks for hanging out with us. An hour, yeah. an hour late to the party. <laughs> you, made, right. you made up for it. Oh, yeah, you yeah. made up for it, man. Like I, I yeah. owe you guys a handful of beers for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys the best of luck for sure. Uh, thank you. Oh, I would, yeah, yeah, you, you as well. You as well. Thanks, guys. Have a yep. good night. Yep, thank you. Bye. You too. Thanks. See you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. That's awesome. Well, damn. <laughs> yeah, I don't. There's, I have nothing to say other than. I mean, until next time. Drink up. Drink up. Geek out. Geek out.